Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening this message. In recent times, we got messages that uh, do we have any program, any course where we can go enroll and we will be very much eligible for the job market. What does it mean that if you go and check the IT portals, you can see that you have different course packages for CCNA, then CCNP, then firewall, then cloud, then automation, etc. Right. So what we have done that uh, we created one program for those engineers uh, who want everything at one place and they are new to the market or maybe they want to enhance their skill set. So we created such program, Joint. Joint is something like uh, job-oriented internet working training. Now in this program, you can see that we have added CCNA routing switching, cloud virtualization, virtualization part of VMware, CCNA or um, associate label wireless knowledge, Cisco Miraki, Google Cloud associate label knowledge, not entire course, but how much you need. Um, to get clear in your interview or uh, when you are working on this cloud environment, you are not new to that cloud environment. Then Python, then routing switching, ASA firewall, and then we, uh, we are adding firepower as well. So not only ASA firewall, but next generation firewall, then we are going to add Cisco SD-WAN, Cisco DNA, etc. Like what we want that we want to make this course as a complete package course in terms that once you go and complete these areas, you write, you can write in your profile in your CV that you know these technologies. And apart from that, not only this course, once you go and use the joint nine, that's the code here. And if you apply, you will get maximum 85, 86% discount on this course. So not only that we are offering the discount coupon, but apart from that, we are giving the lab, EVNG lab. So whoever will go and join this particular course, they will go and get the EVNG lab as well so they can practice routing switching, right? So what you need? You need a solid foundation, solid course where you can gain the technology knowledge. Then you need the lab environment where you can go and do hands-on practice and then you can go and add these areas in your profile and go for interviews and all, right? So on other words, in, in simple words, I can tell this thing that if you go to Udemy or YouTube, I have so many different courses I created just to obviously earn money. So many courses I have, but this is the only course I created actually for the IT professionals actually for you, where I want that you can go and get the job. That's why I have added whatever I have 15, 16 year of uh, training experience. I have added all the best things from there. In terms of that, that you gain knowledge, whatever gray areas you have, someone knows networking, you don't know automation and cloud. Someone knows networking, they don't know firewalling technology, security areas. So that means that you can go enroll this course, gain the knowledge on those areas that you don't know, or suppose if you have only one or two years of experience, then you can start this journey, journey, complete the entire course within five to six months or maybe three months, and then add these things within your CV profile and get the job. So this is something like job oriented or career oriented training that is going to help you to get the job and write knowledge to showcase in your profile. All right, thanks for watching this video. Hello everyone and welcome to ABC of Cisco DNA with respect to non-fabric and with the latest Cisco DNA code 2.1.x. Now the agenda we have with this course is that how we can manage the entire IT infrastructure with help of DNA as a management plan plus it can do automation, plus it can do assurance and so many cool features we have. Now here you can see a list of few of the tasks like basics of DNA installation, setup, use cases, and then how we can go and integrate our DNA with third-party softwares like ICE as a policy engine, 
stealth watch as a monitoring engine etc so we are going to learn a lot in this course now we are going to discuss about the present and future of networking that is with respect to enterprise network now we know that uh, to manage the entire IT infrastructure is a big task and if you go and check the software life cycle we'll find that approx 60 to 70 percent that is the workforce is there dedicated to manage the operation or to run the operation correct now inside that also again if you go and check how much time it is taking to do some sort of configuration deployment troubleshooting other reporting and other operational steps you'll find that it's a, a tedious work the reason behind this is that the present network that we have the present LAN network or maybe IT infrastructure that we have first of all they have n number of different endpoints n number of users they are using n number of application but second very important thing here is this that it is not structured so somewhere something is connected somewhere some wired network somewhere wireless somewhere some different access point somewhere some different firewall the network topology and the order hierarchy they are not in a proper manner so what is happening after uh, a duration after some time some other admin some other uh, architect they are coming they are doing some changes they are not documenting it and in that same way we don't have any global vision or we don't have any 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 type of tool that can give us what is happening in the underlay so if someone has done some major change is still we are depending upon excel sheet or still we are de depending upon the network admin feedback correct some sites remote sites are managed by some vendor or some third party support and what they are doing company they are for them it's very difficult to find out because they are not handling those document or hand over those documents properly so uh, what we need here we need one sort of global view means we know we need a controller that should have the reachability to all the devices and it should collect the information in a nice way in an ordered way and that's the role that we have with dna at least in non-sta fabric so in non sta fabric again in upcoming slides you'll learn more and more about the automation uh, telemetry capabilities policies and all those stuffs but at this point of time that uh, with dna at least with the man at the rate of management plane we have the visibility for all the devices now the second question may come that isn't solar wind providing the visibility isn't solar wind is or like solar wind type of tool they are giving all these uh, stuffs the answer is yeah they are good management platform but is still uh, the capability of dna is at this at this point of time is like unlimited that means that not only you can manage your wired wireless infrastructure your routing uh, stuffs your iot stuffs your network function virtualization but you can enforce policy you can enforce configuration you can segment them there are so many good things that we can't even imagine with the uh, existing management tools that we have so management tools they can do only management but with help of dna we can push the policies uh, we can do the automation we have full assurance capability those new capabilities that is coming with dna now in this diagram you can see that suppose if you don't have managed network then it's very difficult to hard uh, difficult to manage and for user perspective how users they are seeing they're seeing that in between they have some network but users what they want they want to access the application so as long as they are able to access the application in between it is managed by via uh, dna or any other vendor they are not cared but the point here with respect to network admin or network operation team we should track down what applications these users are using if they have problem how to tackle this how to remediate as soon as poly, uh, possible if any attack will come then how we can go and check at which particular endpoint the attack has started and all those stuff these things will be possible only if we have full visibility and then 
you are monitoring the entire traffic and now you can see the volume that as increased capability of the devices end users bandwidth uh, enhancement it's very difficult to track all the application because it is in maybe it is in terabits how you can scan all the terabits of uh, uh, traffic every day correct so volume will come into the picture the scalability will come into the picture and that's why you need one giant type of box one giant management uh, platform one giant policy plane etc who can have who have the information of all of these so you can see that the problem with the uh, existing network is difficult to segment different segments and again uh, if you're segmenting as well with respect to vrf or vlan it's difficult to manage because we don't have man manageability we are losing the control after maybe six seventh uh, segment it's complex to manage because you have so many endpoints so many touch points you have wired wireless firewall nfp etc slow resolution because we don't have full visibility you know Generally, it is taking two to three hours in in, in a you know unmanaged network just to find out which location, which client, what MAC. Correct. First of all, you should know what's the destination, what's the source, what's the destination, what's the MAC, and then what's the topology diagram, and then only you can check the paths and all those things. So where exactly the issue is happening? Just to figure out the basic stuff is taking four to five to six hours. Sometimes you're sending emails, remote sessions happens. It takes too much time, and again, if you want to do some packet capture, you need extra effort for that. It's too much time consuming uh, with the existing network, but but with help of global view that DNA is giving and DNA has capability that they have the analytics, automation, visualization, and they are ready for either a virtual or physical you know, infrastructure. They have inbuilt security, etc. So the point here is this, that with the global software, which has the visibility to all the devices, from there you can easily track down the source, destination, client, which applications they are using, uh, what's the topology diagram, how it, how it look like in a visual sense. You know, each and everything you can uh, take from there. And then if you want to do SSH, if you want to run some commands, first of all, uh, Cisco DNA itself is giving suggestions. Do a step one, a step two, a step three, a step four. If you're not able to do, raise attackers. But still, if you want to do some other stuffs, there are command runner from where you can go and run that. Correct. So you can see the inbuilt capability of DNA is that it is intended, is learning, it's learning the context with help of ICE, the policy engine, from where it is getting the information, and then it has the inbuilt security. It has the insights, and it is reaching the business goals because again, we'll see in upcoming sections that it is integrated with IT management tools. So this is the problem the high level problem we have with the existing network and the solution that dna is giving that um, it has the context so it has the contextual information who what when where how who has done that so it is uh, it can be integrated with cisco eyes cisco umbrella cisco stealth watch and others as well but at least these three will give you the complete picture of uh, we can say that life of packet power by intent here yeah. it has so many intent based capabilities so translate business intent to network policy automate and uh, automate the management and the provisioning millions of devices uh, at it instantaneously yeah that's right so you can create a template and with that automated template you can push the template to hundreds and thousands of devices and it will work Driven by knowledge, yeah, it is capable of doing machine learning. It is capable of doing artificial intelligence. So those features are there in the modern uh, networking management plus control plane plus policy plane type of infrastructure from where we can go and manage the entire IT infrastructure. In last section, we have discussed about the problem, but we have the solution in hand in terms of Cisco DNA Center. Now with Cisco DNA Center, we can do central management. With Cisco DNA Center, we can do policy, provisioning, design, assurance, and then we have the tools where we have multiple options to do the discovery, 
to take, check the topology and others. Apart from that, Cisco is keep adding new and new features inside Cisco DNA to make the present infrastructure visible to all and do all operation related tasks. So we have the list here that Cisco DNA can do complete a network management system. It is a obviously it is a single pane of glass at this point of time we can think as a uh, for complete while for complete wired and wireless network or complete IT infrastructure except WAN and uh, data center but there are adapters or plug-in that we can integrate Cisco DNA with SD-WAN and ACI as well so in that case if you go and do the integration in that case my DNA will become single source of truth, single pane of glass for complete IT infrastructure. We can do automation and provisioning. It is supporting zero touch deployment, complete device life cycle, means we can uh, create uh, RMA, we can do the image management, we can do the configuration management, we can do the automation. Each and everything is possible with DNA. Then we have the analytics and assurance. One nice part I, uh, part I like about DNA is that complete wireless piece is automated in terms of telemetry. So what does it mean? It means that once you go and discover the WLC, all the APs associated with that WLC will get automatically discovered and the telemetry feature is on by default. Now in the initial version of, still we have to go and enable the telemetry for the wired network But in the new feature set in the new version like 2.1.x those telemetry sessions are enabled for wired and wireless as well So we are not worried at the moment my DNA will discover the IT infrastructure It it has the visibility. It has the assurance feature inside that automatically it is start collecting the data now, once you have the telemetry, that means it will reduce the total troubleshooting time. And that's true. Then DNA has true integration. So it is supporting API and third party solution. It is supporting the integration with ITSM and it is open for future enhancements as well. So here you can see in terms of IT, and network system process we can integrate with itsm ipam reporting itsm analytic it can be integrated with tableau for reporting it can be integrated with live action etc the day zero feature that we we have with uh, dna is that it is providing business and network intents like application policy assurance software image management wireless provisioning network inventor discovery plug and play command winner template programmer etc means it has cool and nice long list of features and then finally it has third party sdk and x domain integration we can integrate with cisco miraki for security still watch cisco umbrella even we can integrate with sd wan and others are is still open for future scope not only that cisco devices can monitor with dna we can monitor track third party vendors as well like Juniper Ava that we can integrate with third party SDK. In this course, we are going to primarily focused on automation and assurance piece, not only automation assurance, but we are going to discuss about the operation as well. But yeah, we can have this SD access fabric feature inside that. So we can think our campus network as a SDA fabric like software defined access fabric where we can go and define the data plane control plane management plane policy plane now this data plane will be obviously your edge devices where you are connecting the um, end host servers printers etc then the control plane uh, border node you have to define there so routers you can make as a control plane. Then you have the option for the border means you are taking the SDA to SDA. You are doing the SDA to SDA communication or SDA to internet communication or external world communication. In other words, SDA to unknown subnet communication. Correct. You can go and define the controllers as well in that. Like we can go and use DNA 
as a SDA fabric as well, true SDA fabric as well, where obviously your uh, management plane is the DNA, your control plane, maybe your list protocol and the control routers. Then your data plane will be your S devices like that, and then the policy plane will be ICE. But still in non-SDA terms also, we can go and use our DNA to manage the entire IT infrastructure. So suppose uh, you have one infrastructure and complete infrastructure you want to manage from DNA. What you can do, it's very easy. You install the DNA, discover all those devices inside DNA, once your discovery process is done, you have to assign those devices to particular sites. Once you do the assignment and all, then that's ready and done. So it will not take much time to do the assignment and it will be ready for day zero. More and more features related to this, we will go and check in the upcoming session. So let's just stop here. And in upcoming section, uh, we will learn more about the day zero things. After that, we'll start checking the operational related deployments. Let us discuss about the hardware specification of DNA. And we have actually three different type of core hardware supports. So we have 44 core, 56 core, and 112 core. What type of appliances we have? We have a UCS C220M5 and then in the higher form factor, we have UCS C480M5. Let me quickly show you the diagram here. So here you can see that you have 44 core, you have 56 and 112 core. And again, depending upon uh, say size of the campus area, it's a um, considerable good side. It's a mid size or it's a large size. Uh, according to that, uh, these appliances can be used. And then we have the number as well. So here you can see that, say for example, and these numbers are related to one, two, three, these three columns. So for example, 44 core, they will support 1000 switch routers, wireless controllers, then 2000, then 5000. So like that, uh, we have this list and you can compare say for example core 44 they can uh, support 25000 endpoints then the 56 will support uh, 4000 endpoints then 112 will support uh, 100k endpoints correct so you have that list you can refer this list then important thing here that uh, how many fabric domains they will support how many virtual network can uh, they can create. So here you can see in the large network where you want to create some more segments. Obviously you can go and use 112 core uh, where we can create 256 network. But again, these are the uh, theoretical numbers. No one is using this many numbers, but still we have the option to create it. All right. Uh, let's uh, carry on and let's learn more about the hardware specification. So for example, 44 core, you can see clearly this is one RU um, unit, uh, the processing, the memory, the storage and disk management. Let me quickly show you the diagram how this look likes. So here you can see the front panel, you have slot one to slot 10 slots here and then we have the specification and the description as well so component and description so you have say two uh, 480 uh, gb sas ssd and in slot one two then 1.9 terabyte three to ten then what about the raid support how much raid uh, support we have from one to for example eight and nine ten so all description we have inside the component so which component here you can see number one then number two, here you can see this power button. Then number three, you can see the unit identification number. Then number four, you can see that this is a system status LED. Then number five, the power consumption. Number six, the fan, network indication, the temperature, etc. You can see the logical diagram is also there. So we can easily go and check these things in detail. And these are here in detail as well so number five is power supply and then their color status means green means good then amber amber blinking then fan status green amber 
the network link activity uh, when LED so is number seven. You can see the network link activity. Then number eight, you have the temperature. Number nine, that pull off as a tag. And then number 10, that is KVM connect. So nine also, you can see that pull. Here you can see pull uh, as a tag. All right. So once you are very much familiar with the hardware, so how much memory processor uh, and other stuff they are using, Obviously, we should categorize first my need, how many sites, how many endpoints, because planning is very important before purchasing and then deploying the DNA hardware. So according to that, suppose we plan to go for uh, the first one, that is 44 core or maybe 56 core appliance. So let's go and see the uh, other specification and this is the rear panel of either 44 or 56 core appliance so now this is actually very much that uh, we are interested in this network engineers we are interested so where is the rj45 where is the console where is the usb where is the backup where is the internet connectivity etc now here you can see 1 to 13 uh, options we have uh, in that we should know at least all the ethernet interfaces we have at least five very important ethernet interfaces so let's see one by one so number one here you can see point one here this is a modular lan m l o m lan on motherboard card uh, bay then you have number two that you have the usb 3.0 ports but if you can see here the number three and number four they are the rj45 type of connection and this number three i have highlighted in uh, black bold later here that this can be one slash 10 gig management port this network adapter one in the manglev that's the operating system we have manglev configuration we are connect this port to a switch that provide access to a enterprise network management remember we'll see later on we have list and when i'll uh, i'm going to show you that what are the installation state what are the options that we need to choose? So at that time, you'll clearly understand that why ex exactly we need these many different type of interfaces. So this interface, either one slash 10 gig interface, that's the first interface we have, uh, RG45 type of interface, that will be used for the management enterprise network. And then here you can see that we have four, point number four here, this place. And this is something like it can be connected with internet. So suppose a software upgrade. Suppose if you are behind the proxy. So on those cases, when you are updating so many things, we'll see we have one long list of things that we are, we want and we want to connect with the internet and we want to uh, download those software, software, uh, software and upgrades from the internet. Correct. So that's why this port is important. That's the port number four. Then we have port number six. Uh, that is actually again very important. And this is something like GUI out of band management. So once you connect your device, obviously you want to access it via the GUI graphical interface. So for that reason, we have this one gig interface. We can connect and we can use that GUI out of band management. We have uh, seven that is serial port rg45 connector we have eight that is the led uh, we have nine as well so if i go back here then you can see that after three four and six we have seven eight nine and these are the power slots then ten so let me show you what does mean by this ten this is something uh pci riser two slots and if this card is enabled in your appliance you must disable it you uh, if you do not disable the card your appliance will uh, contain four extra interface which could negatively affect your configuration this is actually basically for future release purposes uh, obviously uh, th these are there that will be used uh, in a future purpose but uh, at the moment we know that okay we have these four interfaces that can be used later on but we are focusing on the five very important interfaces uh, where the this one is this enterprise management that is the interface three uh, then interface four the actually the item four 
is for proxy connecting towards internet or going towards internet then we have GUI out of band management this is the item number six then finally we have two major interface uh, the point number say for example 11 we haven't highlighted here in black but all these points are important so uh, where it is used this is used and here you can see this is the Manglev configuration and this is used actually for the clustering so this is 10 giggy cluster port and here you can see that it's name of this and while you are doing the deployment you'll find the same name will come say ENP 94s 0 f1 this is network adapter 4 and this is the right hand side 10 GBS port for Intel NIC in the appliance uh, PCI riser one slash slot and this is there for the clustering note although capable of uh, operating at lower speed the enterprise and cluster port are intent to operate 10 gig p so although it can support uh, one as well or it can uh, support low speed as well but recommendation is that you should have 10 gig so this is one of the cluster port then finally you have this 12 number item that is the other interface 10 gig p uh, enterprise network an important thing here is that this is connected to the enterprise network correct so this is going to be connected to the enterprise network so that's the important thing we have that we have studied at least two things that we can summarize from here first of all you should know uh, what type of model you have and which type of UCS series they belongs to then in terms of uh, how many devices concurrent sessions endpoints etc etc those list are here then finally we can go and check fine uh, means which interfaces which uh, rj45 interfaces we are going to use as a management interface as a intercluster link as an enterprise network as a out of band gui management etc so those things are very very important here uh, to understand the hardware specification of this M5 DNA appliances. In this section, we are going to talk about pre-installation plan. So you're going to install the DNA and what are the things that you want to check? What will be your checklist? So let's see that what checklist we have. Actually, we have three prerequisite. We should have these three things before going for actual installation so here you can see it is listed step by step uh, you check the cabling and the switching requirement and we are going to talk all these things one by one in the upcoming session so we are going to see the interface cable connections then gather the ip address so we should know about the ip schema the subnetting and other ip traffic information that will discuss inside this section so one by one we have all these sections in the upcoming uh, sessions recordings then prepare a solution for a required access to web-based resource we'll see in the upcoming session then we should know the firewall port openings and the security policy which type of ports will be opened we have long uh, list of that port numbers so we'll discuss about that then gather the additional information uh, used during appliance configuration and first time setup so what will be those useful information we are going to check that as well so we are going to gather those information as well so let's do this thing one by one say for example first of all uh, let's check about the interface cable connection at the moment we know that we have three different core 44 56 and 112 uh, for that we have five di different type of uh, interfaces or ports and we have discussed this in the previous section that what type of ports we have so here also we are going to discuss one more time if you go and check the uh, DNA appliance you'll find that you have one management port and that one gig port is used or going to be used for enterprise management network now in this section after four or five slides I am going to show you that diagram as well with various label or various interface color 
with coloring it's very easy to understand so we have one port for enterprise network management then we have one gig port for internet proxy or cloud access then uh, we have one 10 gig port that will be used for enterprise port to connect with the enterprise network okay and here you can see the uh, hardware specification for 4456 and 112 core appliance then we have 10 gig port and uh, that is for inter cluster communication. So I want three DNS enter in a cluster for that reason We need that and here we have one note as well So while we are doing the deployment for maglev configuration wizard, we'll see that how this wizard look like I'll show you one by one all the snapshots now at that time it is recommended that you so although you're not using the cluster of three, but you should reserve one of the link for cluster Because suppose in future if you want to do anything You have to re-image the appliance Okay, so that means you have to do all those things one more time initially you have done the single uh, Appliance deployment and later on you want to make this in a cluster you have to do the re-image and we have complete document for re-image as well So if you go and search in Google oh, how I can do the re-image We have the set or the step or procedure to do the re-image So something like that if you are planning so plan is that's why you can see the plan is very very important You have to plan for your cabling your IP uh, your web access resources firewall port and then the additional information we should plan this so how I am going to do the uh, Clustering which interfaces which IP address everything we need to plan Then finally uh, we have one interface for SIMC a SIMC that's for out-of-band appliance management and that's the reason we have one port and the, these are the options So, few of the f uh, features we have seen those are optional few of the features we have seen that those are must because that should be there now this is the diagram i was talking about here you can see clearly that in the bottom and now again it's very easy to understand this bottom interfaces this green red and uh, black color interfaces so these are here you can see one is uh, for SIMC one is for a network adapter one is for management uh, It's easy to understand or recognize here the bottom half ports are one giggy We can refer like that that they are one slash ten giggy So you can see this red one is one gig, but the others we have option one slash ten gig But the top half is ten giggy ten giggy so one is used for enterprise port one is used for cluster port Correct, so in that way actually we can understand that now if you go and check the interfaces related to 112 core so at that time you will find the difference. So let me quickly show you here and here uh, uh, here you can see that uh, you have the interfaces 1 gig 1 gig or 1 slash 10 gig and these three interfaces on here in between you can see I have one uh, Enterprise port and then I have one cluster 10 gig port Okay, so uh, these are the way that we should go and check and uh, Understand that how you are going to do the cabling Likewise, we have three node uh, DNA as well. So let's break this session in two parts Let's stop here and in the next session, we'll go and learn about three node deployment as well. Three node Cisco DNA and uh, what are the IP we need? Uh, that is the prerequisite. So let's discuss that. Now, when we are talking about three node architecture or uh, we have different appliances and we want to convert inside the cluster so at that time you can see the diagram it's actually clear here that i have three appliances and these three appliances including one of the cluster link that we have so here you can see that you have your cluster port that is nothing but the network adapter 4 
that is the enterprise uh, 94 sf1 so this cluster port everywhere you can see cluster port we have and in this way we are creating the clustering of the appliances or various appliances apart from that all the interfaces here you can see clearly going to the switch and switch is nothing but the representation of one of the network so since all these colors and marking that you are seeing here going to one of the segment or one of the switch uh, that's why it is recommended that we should use non overlapping ip addresses so we should assign the ip addresses to all these interfaces that should be uh, independent and that should not overlap if there is any overlap then even in the installation process it, it will not be successful now in case of a 122 core you can see the diagram and the interfaces and you can see the clusters here so this is the way that uh, we should do the clustering of three appliances three dna appliances now what are the interfaces are used here we have the interfaces to x cable for reference so what 10 gig sfp we are going to use uh, you can take this but you can check this particular slide and make a note so far we have a study that we have four main interfaces we have 10 gig and 10 gig enterprise cluster port then we have 1 gig and 1 gig so 1 slash 10 gig option for management and cloud portal and then we have cmc as well uh, here you can see that required mandatory required mandatory but other are optional but is strongly recommended so in in terms of ip address that you need one ip address with subnet 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 and for simc also you should have one ip address and the subnet and in the next slide I will discuss that in that particular subnet what should be the cider that we are looking for here you can see that uh, since you have cluster of uh, three appliances then obviously you need one whip as well virtual IP as well there is one small node that there are four interfaces on each appliance the enterprise cluster management and cloud ECMC you can think like that enterprise cluster management cloud at a minimum you must configure the enterprise and the cluster uh, port as they require for DNS center but there is uh, a caution the caution or precaution is this suppose if you are doing the deployment means you are doing the cabling uh, you are doing all the hard work you are assigning the ip addresses you are reserving the ip addresses and once you do the deployment and later if you want to do changes so suppose i haven't done the cluster mode and next i want to do the cluster mode we should do the proper arrangement and we should have the reservation at least for that interface that i am not using uh, allocate it as a cluster interface and uh, assign some ip address otherwise in future if you want to do the change you have to do the re-image process you have to redo that process again okay and um, this process is not that easy it will consume lots of time so that's why the planning is very important to do before doing actual execution uh, we can see that we have other IP requirements as well. So for example default gateway IP address we need uh, Here in the blue color you can see even you can go and check these links and you will get the uh, DNA center security best practice even I'm going to cover uh, most of the things But uh, always you can go and refer in Cisco. We have very nice document You can go and check to their URL as well then we need DNS server IP uh, you should have DNS server IP if you have any static route uh, pointing towards the gateway then that also we can go and assign uh, we should assign the NTP because uh, we want to do the integration of my DNA with the policy plane and policy plane is nothing but the ice engine so for the integration purpose with the ice and my DNS center I should have proper sync between 
uh, ICE and NTP server and obviously we should assign the NTP server IP address not only the, the policy plane and the uh, DNA but internally also all the hardware element inside the DNA should sync the time so time syncing is required and in the next session I will discuss more about why actually we need such type of IP addresses why there is a need of these many uh, non overlapping or why there is a recommendation to be more precise for all these non overlapping IP addresses now for service subnet and this service is something like internal services inside the DNA so DNA has their assurance engine their inventory their collection and all uh, all these internal services uh, these interval internal services they are getting the IP addresses non overlapping private IP addresses in this range and it should be minimum slash 21 so the internal processes can communicate uh, with each other with these IP addresses and schema so we have the uh, service subnet or subnet services IP address apart from that we should uh, reserve the IP address for cluster service subnet okay again this cluster service uh, subnet means the database access the message verse and so many internal processes they want to communicate I don't want to overlap all these internal communication and processes or the internal nodes we are going to assign these IP addresses to DNA internal nodes. It should be non overlapping. There is one example here you can see. So you can use these two because these are non overlapping. Minimum, minimum you have slash 21. So you can use the cider of slash 21. All right, so we can stop here. And in the next session, we are going to discuss that why exactly we need these many categories or these many isolation of IP addresses. What's the requirement we have? This session is very interesting and it is going to be short, but it is going to be very informative. What we are going to understand and learn here from this session is that why in first place I need these many addresses? Why, why I need these many address space? And the answer is that if we see the internal architecture of DNA and for that I should recommend you that you please go and search uh, Kubernetes based services containerization. Uh, let me quickly go and open this link. Uh, simply you can copy and paste in the Google even the URL is also so once I post this document you can uh, use this but let me open this particular document so I open this particular link and uh, this is kubernetes link cluster networking although suppose if you don't know kubernetes and how this container services works then uh, please go here uh, have the basic concepts of container but for DNA understanding this is not required this is just for the knowledge purpose uh, if you go and check the Kubernetes model, you'll find that you have uh, architecture. First of all, you have container. It's like uh, some sort of virtualization of uh, the operating system. In this particular architecture, we have different type of nodes. So we have, you have so many internal nodes and these nodes, the intercommunication uh, across these nodes are IP based. So all these nodes uh, having certain certain IP addresses and according to those IP addresses they use to communicate to each other. Uh, that's the uh, very top overview of uh, Kubernetes and here you can see this is uh, say traditional deployment virtualized deployment where you have hardware operating system hypervisor different different guest operating system in Kubernetes you have hardware operating system and then you have some sort of docker and then you have uh, multiple uh, binary and library and you have containers containers binary, binary library but the 
behind the scene thing is this that internally all these containers they have the nodes they may have some master nodes as well they may have some backup as well but they are doing the communication in terms of that uh, uh, they are doing some sort of ip communication in between them and that's the reason we have uh, in dna architecture as well uh, we have same type of containerization architecture okay and the reason the very reason that's why we have these many ip addresses so here you can see that we have 4096 addresses for the services and the cluster services correct so we have two type of services services and cluster services inter service communication and the cluster who is doing the communication with various internal services so that's why we have this ip addresses and we don't want to overlap in between these ip addresses why because the last point here you can see that uh, they will maintain the system performance why they will maintain the system performance because if you have non overlapping traffic then they will do not uh, do some sort of inter vrf communication that means they will not encapsulate decapsulate the packets they do not have recirculation inside the nodes they have their individual space according to that they can communicate correct so this inter uh, communication or encapsulation decapsulation within the system is something process uh, intense and that's why it is not recommended uh, here you can see this leads to multiple in cap decap of packets going for one service to another causing high internal latency and at a very low level uh, with cascading impacts uh, at higher layers it is very much abstracted or uh, influenced from the kubernetes based service containerization architecture uh, and then currently cisco model here you can see that uh, cisco dna is supporting say for example 100 services but uh, cisco is telling that in future there may be so many services can be added that's why just for the protection mechanism they are giving a big address range to be reserved correct then the final piece of this obviously the point number one is telling that uh, you have some reserved the space that can be used in future or filled in the future now these service support over these subnets are l3 based so this is again taken from the kubernetes and that is also l3 based uh, we have the RFC 1918 and 6598 requirement uh, because of the requirement by Cisco DNA Center to download the package from the cloud. So remember, we have one cloud interface. So from Cisco, all those packages can be downloaded, and that's why we have non overlapping addresses uh, uh, taken from RFC 1918 and 6598. If the selected IP add range do not confirm with rfc 1918 and 6598 this can quickly lead to problem with uh, public ip overlaps or overlaps correct so in short if i summarize this particular slides first of all this is the ip based internal communication there are some uh, 100 services that is enabled at the moment but in future we may have more services so that's why we have one big chunk of addresses that is free and finally these vrf or these ip based services they they are using these rfcs for their address fulfillment okay so this is actually very important and i hope that you understand this particular session let us talk about requirement of internet url and fqdn that is fully qualified domain name and we have one list you can see here in the list that in order to cisco dna center must access these urls and fqdn so while we are doing day zero deployment we should allow these urls to access or we want to access these urls why because we want to download the updates uh, to the system and uh, application package software, uh, submit user feedback to the product team. 
we have the DNS enter update package. So here you can see that you have long list of URL and that is Cisco connect DNA. Uh, suppose if you don't want to give single single URL so we can go and use this uh, wildcard asterisk start that means anything start with this and then we can use 443 as a port number apart from that we have other URL as well so for a smart account and swim software download these are the URL user feedback then integrate DNA with Cisco Meraki so we have these wildcards and URL okay what we want here that uh, we want communication uh, from my DNA to these URLs and obviously uh, we, sh we don't want that directly we can go and communicate so in between we can uh, implement proxy server or the traffic will go via the proxy server uh, he here you can see you have some more URL so you have software Cisco cloud SSO cloud SSO 1 2 API console API Cisco all these are related to integrate with cisco.com and cisco smart licenses okay apart from that if you want to render the accurate information in the in insight and the location map so these are the urls and for ai related stuffs we have these urls so what I, uh, I was talking that you don't want to directly access to the internet obviously the traffic first will go to the proxy and from there it will go to the uh, go and access the internet and the resources over internet so in this case what is happening the communication between the uh, say my DNS server and the proxy server that is HTTP only at this point of time but the communication obviously from the uh, from the proxy server to the outside that will full uh, sub fully support https so in between dna to proxy we have http uh, from proxy to outside we have https and then we need to go and open these many list of uh, urls all right so let's stop here what are the required ports we have to do the communication from the DNA to and forth? And this uh, session you'll find it very interesting and we are going to revise some of the ports that we know, oh, SSH, uh, say for example, HTTP, HTTPS, SNMP, uh, other ports. So we have actually long list of port number listed in this particular session or recording. So let's see all those port numbers that is required while doing the day zero deployment. Now here you can see that you have incoming traffic obviously coming to your DNA. So you have the port number and we know that actually these are well known port numbers 22 used for uh, SSH 67 for boot P, HTTP, NTP, SNMP, HTTPS, SSH, TCP again these are some port numbers uh, that may be uh, SSH can be hosted then triple nine one multicast domain name system MDNS for outgoing traffic uh, SSH and for telnet 22 23 we know that we know that DNS uses port 53 we have port 80 if it is used we can use 8080 and if you have Cisco supported certificate and trust pool and then obviously to reach to cisco.com slash security pki you can use these port numbers we have ntp and here you can see the supported protocol ntp snmp uh, agent http then ice xmp for pixie grid then 9060 uh, that is the port number for ers actually these are the integration api integration in between dna and ice and later on obviously we'll discuss about when we'll discuss about the integration of ice with dna uh, what are the things required from the ice side what are the things required from the dna side now uh, in the upcoming slides you will find the ports or the protocols that should be open if uh, the devices are behind the firewall okay so let's go here and you have this logical diagram that you have the dns center and maybe your uh, wlc is behind firewall your infrastructure that you can see that your underlay 
or your fabric is behind the firewall your dna center your eyes and uh, dscp ntp servers are uh, in other zone so in that case you can see here what's your source what's your destination what's your port number what's your destination uh, and then the description now these uh, important slides that you can even pause the recording and you can check so for example any to cisco dna uh, obviously ud 53 is for dns server so the uh, description is from dns center to dns server likewise for example icmp dns center icmp uh, wireless controllers from dns center to wlc dns center so from any the source is any to dns center port 80 and 443 that's for ap and you can see the description so in the destination you can see that you have dns server you have fabric underlay behind the firewall you have ntp server cisco wireless controller cisco ap dns centers then uh, internet connectivity traffic any to dna port 443 uh, why it is used for so you have the registry dot uh, cisco connect dna dot com then you have cisco connect dna registry cdn cdn cisco connect software dot cisco cisco sso and here you can see the description as well so few of them are for dna center pack package few of them are device software a smart account access cssm is smart licensing api cco licensing Meraki integration so uh, these things actually we are study and here good thing that here we have the nice summary format then this table is for cisco software defined fabric underlay traffic what's the source what's the source port and the source what's the destination what's the destination port and what's the use so here you can see so for example from fabric switch and the router loopback ip to cisco dna and plug and play so for that these directions and the source and destination will be used uh, same line you can see now here interestingly you can see that we have tcp and udp port number 4342 that will be for fabric underlay that will be used for lisp encapsulation control message so here you can see that you have lisp encapsulated control messages and then you have lisp control plane communication both are happening at the level of port number 4342 then here you can see 4789 that is for a vxlan gpu this is the vxlan port number 4789 then you have the well-known radius port number like 1645 1646 etc then you have ports for ice uh, care of address uh, you have ntp you have wireless controller so everything should be taken care before doing actual deployment and you have all these things listed here so obviously uh, you can take the notes from here as well but yeah for uh, your deployment you can make the note from here so for cisco wireless controller here you can see the list of that so for example ha server using tcp 1315 that's the dns server that's for database server haqs then we have ha database port you can see the well-known port numbers 1316 13 up to 1320 then you have 8082 that is ha web service health monitoring port again here also you can see the long list of port number uh, related to cap web tunnel loopback uh, related to snmp traps related to mse services okay so all these things and finally you have this uh, port number for ap pool uh, for uh, udp 68 and udp 67 for dhcp services dhcp services then you have 514 for ap ip pool uh, that's obviously this port number belongs to syslog destination uh, messages then you have these port numbers 69 and 5246 and uh, say for example 5248 for wireless controllers for allowing the cap app tunnel and these port numbers here that you are referring you can go and check this sheet as well so here also you have the communication between the inside the cap app tunnel from the wlc to ap and that's the reason we have that port finally for ice traffic you can see that 
uh, if the destination is border and you are using the SGT exchange protocol or SXP, so at that time the port is uh, 64999 means ICE and the other devices can have the secure tunnel. So if they want to communicate, uh, you can create that tunnel. For that tunnel, we are using this 64999. Then we have UDP 514, that's obviously for the syslog services. Then you have well-known radio sports for authentication, authorization, and accounting. Then you have UDP, uh, you can see the port number for COE, then 1234 NTP. Now, good thing about all these lists that we are seeing here is that you can go and list each and every services related to DNA, related to wireless controllers, related to AP, related to ICE, related to DHCP services, because all these services are going to be used inside the DNA. So before doing the deployment, we should know the port numbers, services, and we need to enable or open these ports inside the firewall. All right, so this was actually very informative uh, session and uh, we have the summary and actually we have the actual Excel sheet to create the firewall rules. Let us continue our discussion required uh, for required configuration information. So still we are doing the day zero configuration and we are going a step by step to know that what are the important things required to do the installation. Now in this section, we'll learn that different type of user, user accounts and password and complexity of password required because this Manglev is nothing but the Linux type of server. So once we are doing the deployment, uh, we should give the Linux username, the password, the password should having their standard like you are using the mix of lowercase, uppercase, numerical, special characters, etc. Then we have the password generation seed. So inside the Manglev configuration, we can go and we have that option to generate the password and assign to it. Okay, so these are very much like once you do the installation at that time, it will pop up and you have to simply fulfill all these requirements. Apart from that, we have the password for Cisco IMC user password. And uh, then we have the password for the master node. Suppose if we have cluster, we are using extra node. So at that time, uh, we need that. Then uh, we have the password related to super user. We have password for Cisco credential, for Cisco smart account. These things are very much uh, a step-by-step -step process that we need to go and give. Then we have to assign the IP address, manager URL and credential, uh, the proxy URL port and those credential, Cisco DNA center users. Step-by-step, -step, uh, everything will come. We have to go and follow these procedure. Follow this procedure means you should use a complex password. Uh, there are some password which is optional, but still you can go and assign it. If you have extra node, then uh, use the uh, master node IP address. Then you have to give the credential for super users, uh, Cisco account, a smart account, and then the credentials re related to say IPAM, proxy URL, Cisco DNS Center. Now, one of the very important thing here is that while you are doing the integration of your DNA, DNA, DNAC plus ICE, at that time you have to understand few of the things. So we have to make a note, this thing, that uh, during the integration, what are the important things? So ICE integration uh, with the DNA, uh, you will need Cisco ICE server IP address, administrative username and password. These are needed to log into and configure your organization ICE server because we are going to do the mutual authentication. They form some sort of secure tunnel in, in between ICE and the DNA and then they start exchanging their uh, information. So certificate exchange, some sort of control packets. And then uh, the DNA from DNA, I can create the policy, push the policy and it will be reflected inside the ICE. Obviously we need to enable the Pixie grid and some sort of other settings as well uh, that we'll see. 
Now there are some consideration that if Cisco ICE is not configured or if the required version of Cisco ICE is not present, Cisco DNAC Center install uh, means installation would, will happen but group based policy is disabled. You must install, install and upgrade the ICE and connect to DNA or DNAC. Uh, you can then start the data migration. So suppose if the feature compatibility is not there, the GPO group based uh, policy G, uh, BP will not work and we need to have the compatible uh, images in between ICE and DNA to do this. Then Cisco DNA Center uh, data present in the previous version is preserved when you upgrade. The data migration operation merge data from Cisco DNA Center and the ICE. If the uh, migration uh, encounters a conflict, preference is given to data from the ICE. So suppose we are doing the data migration and at that time uh, your policy related configuration uh, in case of any conflict or error and the privilege has been given to the Cisco ICE related to policy configurations. Now suppose if your DNS center is unavailable. So at that time uh, we can go and make that ICE that AI you are the policy engine. So move that ICE from read only mode to write mode as well. So from ICE the policy can get enforced, but these are very rare condition, but option is there. If your DNA is un unavailable, ICE can uh, work as a primary member or as a master. So this allow you to make policy changes directly in Cisco ICE. After Cisco DNA Center is available again, you must disable the read only override on Cisco ICE and resync the policy data on DNA Center uh, from that uh, group based access control setting page. Only use this option when absolutely necessary uh, since changes made directly in Cisco ICE are not propagated to DNA. These are the corner rare cases that we need to take care. Uh, we have the authorization and policy service information. We know that ICE is going to do that. The thing is that ICE is doing its work. DNA is doing its own work. Once you do the integration with between the ICE and the DNA with API, then ICE can work or ICE will work as a read only mode. You can create the policy from the DNA center and you can push that policy that will reflect inside the ICE. That's the uh, use case we have in the integration. So if you are using the authorization and the policy server that is not Cisco ICE, uh, you will need to need the server IP address protocol choice. And these things you can see once I log into the DNA center, we have this option that you need to add the server IP inside the system and then you can uh, check that. So again, these are the use cases and corner cases. Also, we can see say that, yeah, but it depends that in the uh, existing environment or uh, in the client environment, you have some existing servers that client want to use it. So although ICE can provide those features, but client is still wants to use those services because they are working fine and they are doing their services. So at that time, uh, we have these options as well. Finally, uh, obviously we'll go and discuss more about the configuration authentication uh, policy servers. We'll discuss more about that later on. Finally, we have the SNMP retry and timer values. Uh, this also we can discuss later on in the separate section. So whatever blue ones that you are seeing, blue uh, underline these notes. Uh, one thing that you can do here that you can go and search this thing in Google as it is as a string. You will get the document, you will get the notes as well. The other thing that uh, we will do, whatever blue ones are here and if it is important so we'll go and discuss this separately in the upcoming sessions so far we have discussed a lot about what type of ports what type of interface what type of urls that should be uh, allowed while we are doing the deployment of dna now in this session we have the summary of whatever we have discussed earlier so here you can see that what type of interfaces you have. 
you have the sim c port you have enterprise 10 gig intra cluster 10 gig management and cloud update interface now while you are doing the deployment the prerequisite is that you should have minimum one dns server ip ntp server ip if your dna dnac is behind the uh, internet obviously you you should pass that traffic uh, via some proxy so proxy server ip proxy server port is required now here you can see that because you have the services and then you have the cluster node so what are the best practices uh, for the cluster node and for the services that uh, you should have minimum slash 21 at this pool reserve for cluster subnet and service subnet correct now in case if you are making the cluster of the dna uh, obviously the dna appliances at least three so your latency should be less than 10 millisecond for that intra cluster link so suitably you can think that oh so probably all those DNA centers are inside uh, within within same premises in same location and that may be true for most of the cases and until unless you are uh, meeting the criteria of less than 10 millisecond of latency correct apart from that it is recommended that you should have cluster of uh, um, DNAC now here in the diagram you can see that where all these port sits so you have 10 gig of uh, intra cluster link you have 10 gig of enterprise network then you have one gig of u management one gig of inter a dedicated management interface one gig of cloud uh, interface correct now let me quickly walk you through some of the uh, standard or you can make a table in that table you can put the enterprise addressing UB, CMC, cluster link address, and the uh, service subnet addresses. So clearly, you can see that for cluster link and the uh, service subnet services, minimum slash 21 is required. For CMC, slash 32 is okay. For UB management, slash 32 is okay. But when we are talking about the cluster, when we are talking about the enterprise IP, so if you have three different, obviously, devices, uh, you should have uh, three physical IP, but you should have one uh, virtual IP as well. Now, coming back to the enterprise IP address, so here you can see for DNA 1, 2, and 3, I have individual IPs, and then I have one IP for the VIP. That's the virtual IP. Okay, so these things are important, and while uh, you do the deployment, you'll find that uh, one by one you are getting the options to put these values. So nothing much more brainer. You can go through it. You can uh, put what IPs for SIMC, what IPs for OOP, cluster, etc., etc. But before doing the actual deployment, we should have list of these IP addresses. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to get the free IP in a running infrastructure because most of the uh, organization they have already consumed the IP addresses or maybe. Uh, one reason don't know that other reason what type of IP addresses they are using until unless we have some centralized uh, IP address management IPAM or other tool correct great uh, you want to pass these URL because few of the URLs for cloud to get the updates from the cloud few of the URLs to get the packages swim software etc and these things we have discussed earlier as well in detail uh, here you uh, you are seeing this as a summary, correct? Now, so these are the requirement, and finally, when we are talking the cloud update, so here you can see that I have my user, I have my DNAC node, and then uh, weekly. So here you can see that update using cloud uh, tethering, cloud tethered images are available once every few weeks. So you can think like, okay, in a month or in in two months time frame, I have to get updates from the cloud and then that i can install here in the schedule maintenance window now here you can see that we have the production catalog uh, catalog that is secure and goes through rigorous testing by secure uh, cisco security and trust organization so it's not like that you are getting some patch from the cloud and you are downloading it uh, it is secure enough 
because Cisco is doing a rigorous testing uh, to make able those uh, packages to the customer and it's secure enough to download those images. Great. So let's just stop here and next section I'll walk you through the steps. I have the snapshot. I'll show the snapshot that while doing the deployment to the DNA, what are the steps involved? In this session, I'm going to walk you through the installation steps. What are the steps involved to do the installation? Now, at this point of time, we know what are the prerequisite. You have unboxed that appliance. You have done the power cable. You have done all the connections. So my hardware level is ready. And now I want to boot my OS. I want to put certain things like the IP address gateway, DNS, uh, NTP, HTTP proxy, etc. And then my DNS server is ready to serve. So now my, you can think as your management plane, that's a DNAC, but apart from management, it can do orchestration, automation, assurance, etc. So there are so many things that the DNS server can do. So if you do, the step number one, step number two, that means you are ready with your DNA. The next phase uh, that we'll learn in upcoming session that how we can do the discovery, how you can add the devices inside the fabric, how you can utilize, um, how you can utilize the templates and other features to unify your wired and wireless network, correct? So let's carry on the steps involved. You can see that uh, once you uh, boot up the server, then it will ask you that uh, is it a standalone or it's a part of a cluster. So here you can see that select a start DNAC C cluster to set up the master node. It is recommended, always it is recommended that uh, you should go and install the DNS server uh, in a cluster. Now, if you want to do that, you have to go and check this particular option. So you want to make that cluster link. Yes, you can do it. Now, once you do this, obviously you have to put the uh, IP addresses for the cluster link. And we have discussed a lot about different type of IP addresses, even different type of interfaces that we need to do and uh, that we have to go and do the configuration. Correct. Now again, in this slide, it's step by step. You can follow all the steps. So here you can see that you can go and give the uh, IP address, uh, the gateway, uh, the subnet mask, DNS server. That's type of mandatory thing that we should put the DNS server, the NTP, etc. Correct. So once you configure the network adapter one, network adapter two, then you can go and do the configuration for network adapter three. You have to put uh, all these mandatory things like the IP address, net mask, gateway, host, etc. Then you can go and put the network adapter four uh, IP addresses and all those required information. Now remember here that when you are providing the information for a network adapter 4 at that time you are putting the static routes as well now this network adapter 4 belonging to so let me highlight here the enterprise network now for enterprise network uh, where is your gateway and where your static route pointing to you have to go and assign that information correct so once you complete with network adapter 4, then your system will get booting. Now what we have done with all these network interfaces that we have assigned the IP, gateway, DNS, static route, etc. Once your system will boot up, it will ask you about the proxy information. So are you behind the uh, internet, the DNS server? Because we know that one of the interface is going to be connected with the cloud and from there it will get all the mandatory packages and all the mandatory files, correct? And that connection communication should be secure enough. So we can go and give the uh, information about the proxy. Then for that DNA, we can go and give, again, two very important thing that uh, we have to provide 
say IP for the cluster that we have already given and then IP for the services as well. So how the inter node communication will happen, correct? And the inside architecture is very much uh, inspired from the Kubernetes architecture. Uh, that means that uh, you have independent nodes, IP-based independent nodes or services, and if they want to communicate, you have to give the IP to them as well. Correct? So now you can go and provide the details, or provide the IP actually for the Manglev. So we know that underlying operating system is Manglev. You can go and uh, log into the Manglev and you can check certain CLI commands as well that I will show in this presentation. You can go and give the username and password for the Linux user and the uh, GUI and API as well. So set the strong password for the Manglev, that's the Linux, uh, for the API and for the GUI. You can go and put the NTP. So it, it is going to do the check for the NTP, reachability with the NTP or not. Again, I told you already that we have services, we have cluster and slash 21 is reserved for that. So we should assign those addresses as well. And finally, once we go to all these steps that I have shown you earlier, it will take approx three hour to boot it and fully functional. Now what we can do at this point of time, we can go log into the Linux shell, that's the Manglev. We can go and check the status of different type of packages. It's very much like we are using in case of ICE as well, where we are checking the application status for ICE. So here also you can go to the Manglev and then you can check different type of services. So application policy, assurance, automation core, command runner, device onboarding, DNAC platform. Remember all these items that you are seeing here uh, for these items, most of these items you'll find that we have the GUI option as well. So we can go and click to the command runner and we'll get the CLI for uh, certain devices. So whatever device you want the CLI, you can use the command runner. Likewise, we have separate independent tab for assurance and uh, most of these items you are seeing as a as a service, you can think these as a services. Next very important command here highlighted, you can go and check the uh, node status as well. And while checking the node status, you can see here what's the disk space, memory, uh, etc. those information. So very much like system specific information you can get from here, correct? So once you do the installation, then obviously you want to log into the DNAC from the GUI. It is supported by most of the modern uh, web browser like Chrome, uh, Firefox, etc. So next session, what I'm going to do that I will log into the uh, GUI and in that GUI you will find that nothing is deployed. So up to this point, whatever we have discussed is already done in our lab. I can log into the GUI and you will get the blank DNS server. In upcoming days, what we are going to do is that we will populate that DNS. It means we are going to discover different devices and then we are going to specify the roles of the devices. Means from the scratch, we are going to build uh, our lab and then in future, we are going to do the testing as well inside the lab. All right, so let me log into the DNAC server. Before login to DNAC, I have few slides to show. So once you have done your DNAC installation, once you put IP gateway, DNS, NTP, etc. means once you have done all the required configuration, then you can go and log in via the web browser, correct? So at that, that time, suppose if some other person has done the installation, you can go and change the admin password. That's obviously the Cisco recommendation. Now, once you change the admin password, you can go and register your DNS enter with the CCU ID. Why? Because in that case, you will get the mandatory features like swim, telemetry, licensing, etc. And it can be added later. We can integrate our DNS enter with the smart account as well. And nowadays, you can know that we have a different type of a smart account manage URL from that particular smart account manage URL, you can even manage your 
DNA devices you can manage your risky band devices means you can manage your end-to-end -end IT infra devices from that software.cisco.com URL correct now if you are going to integrate your DNA with IPAM uh, InfraBlocks, Blue Cat, etc. You can go and do it on day zero installation. You can go and integrate with the proxy server as well. So you can you have to uh, provide the proxy server details uh, to do the integration, correct? And finally, you will get one page where you have the terms and licenses that you can click next, and means you are accepting those terms and licenses. That is the mandatory acceptance required. So accept it do the next and now we are ready to do uh, we are ready to go actually to do the automation assurance provisioning designing so good amount of things we can do from our dna server and in upcoming sections you will learn understand more and more so next session i'm going to log in to the dna center and then i will show you each and every tab although it's very busy the dashboard itself is quite busy means you have so many options that you can do with wired and wireless infrastructure so what you can do now that you can uh, log in with your username and password you can do the design automation assurance of your network now it's a good practice that once you're logging first time you can go and check the software updates so what is the status of the software means what's the status of SD access it is installed it is downloaded etc because in day zero you, there are chances that you may get packages from the cloud from the cisco cloud and then you have to install it now it's up to us that we want to install all the packages at a time or we can select or deselect so we can go and uh, select certain packages which i want to install so I can go and selectively install that otherwise we can do install all as well and finally we should go to the uh, software update and we should check the system update and we can check the progress for all those updates installation etc all right so let's stop here and in next section I'm going to log in to the DNA and I'll show you most of the things in the dashboard but obviously during the lab uh, during um, the uh, steps that we are going to follow um, related to design uh, obviously the planning provisioning um, assurance etc etc so you will learn the usability of each and every tab let me walk you through the dnac dashboard this is the new one uh, let me log in here. You can go and give the username and the password Now once you log in then the dashboard will come and in the new dashboard New version dashboard. So let me quickly show you that what version is this? This is 2.1.x and Now you can see on the top. We don't have all those tabs. Those were there in 1.3.x we can go here and you can check the about the api references developer resource contact support etc if you go and click about then it will tell you about this current version this is 2.1.2.5 and starting from 2.1x you will find that we have separate menu tab there if you go and click you can see that now it is arranged inside these many options so then you can go to design uh, that's related to designing the overall DNA. So here you can go and uh, create your sites or uh, site hierarchy. Then you can go and set your network global settings like your servers, DSCP pools. Then you can go and manage the image repository. You want to make some image as a goal, you can go and tag it. Then you can go and create the network profile such as switching, routing, wireless, NFE, etc. And then finally the authentication template uh, design we can go and create. Correct. Then we have policies. Suppose if we have uh, ICE and DNA integration. So in, in that case, the uh, ICE actually ICE is a uh, policy engine 
it's a policy plane inside DNA. And once we have the integration, then we can go and create different type of policies. So group based policies, IP based control policy, we can go and check the application. Now this is not related to policy, but we can go and check the applications. We know that uh, inside uh, uh, inside ICE, because uh, the infrastructure that we are assuming nowadays, uh, they are iOS XE and the latest code. With those code, we are assuming that all those devices, they are running NBAR, network-based application recognition engine, and that can support up to 1400 or 1400 plus applications. So let me go and click here. Let me show you this, how it look like. So once you go inside the application policy, obviously this is the policy place where we can go and create the policy. So we can go and create the policy, but again, if you want to go and check the supported application, so then you can go to the service catalog and then you can view all those 1400 plus application here. You can see uh, 1479 plus 28 application sets, etc. Correct. Let's focus and let's go back to the dash dashboard only. And then finally, you can ha have the traffic copy and the virtual network, VN network. Uh, this is applicable mostly for SDF fabric where we have multiple uh, virtual network and then you can create a rule based on that. All right, so let's go to the provisioning. Once you are inside the provisioning, you can see the inventory and plug and play. If I go inside inventory, again, I will get different type of focus. So suppose if I click in inventory and because this is fresh new DNA, nothing has been discovered here. But if you go and check the focus tab, you can see that you have inventory, you have software image, you have provisioning, you have mark for replacement. If you go to software image, basically it will tell you mostly about the software image upgrade, etc. So what you need to do, you have to go to the focus and then you can go to the action and then you can see what type of actions you can take. Correct. So inventory, software image, provisioning, telemetry, etc. And again, you have plug and play as well, where if you want to do the uh, day zero deployment related to zero, uh, zero touch provisioning, those things are supported inside that. Now, uh, apart from that, you can see that you have various other services like service catalog, user defined, uh, Cisco user defined network, application visibility. If we have a stealth watch integration, that is there. App hosting for switches, IoT services. If we have third party umbrella in, uh, integration, that can be there. Then if you want to create site to site uh, VPN, those things you can go and create, correct? So the mainly actually we have um, main four tabs. We have design, we have policy, we have provisioning and assurance. We know that we have full feature fledged support with the telemetry application visibility and those things are grouped inside the assurance tab. Once you are inside the assurance, uh, you can go and check the site health, network health, client health. Correct, and this is applicable for both wired and wireless. Again, this is a big place where you can see that you can go and check the health issue sensor, Wi-Fi 6, Rogue and WIPS, dashboard library, network inside, heat map, peer comparison, site comparison, issue settings. Means you can go and set the uh, issues and priority as well. So sometimes maybe some of the priority as per our company standard that is P3, but here it may be marked as P2 that you can go and change from here. So this is like the setting place there where you can go and change the priority. So here you can see the listed priority P1, P2, P3. If you want, you can change those priorities as well. Correct? Then you have the tools option here. Inside tools option, we have discovery, we can discover the network devices, we can go and check the topology, we have the command runner, means those supported devices, we can run a good amount of command, we can check the license, uh, we can go and create the template. So with those templates, those are the CLI based template, we can push to the devices or n number of devices at a time. We have model config editor, 
we have wide area bonds here security advisories if you want to check p search and their scores you can go and check there then we have the network reasoner as well uh, which is some some sort of automated way of doing troubleshooting so if you want to check the cpu utilization fabric data collection power supply ping devices interface downs those things you can go and do from here correct so these nice features we have inside tools and then finally you have one very important section related to platform so suppose if you want to do the api integration you can do it uh, from the developer uh, developer toolkit you can check the uh, runtime dashboard as well so whatever that we have inside the system inside the platform you can go and check from here the most important thing here we have so let me show you that once you go inside the manage and platform you can see that you need to go and enable the itsm integration the restful api it is active at the moment then endpoint attribute with itsm means it is integrated with the itsm and cm database so cmdb database that means uh, you can think that your source of truth can be dna and once you have the information from dna then you can go and check those informations in other places as well and then you can go and check the event some uh, event subscription settings as well means if you um, if you have any third party like webhook servers so where you can subscribe those events to the those servers those destinations you can go and uh, assign that now one important thing here is that that you can go to the toolkit and you can see that you have the api integration options so you can run the apis from here you can check your integration flow if you have multi-vendor support like juniper avaya those devices also can be discovered and some sort of manageability functions are there you can go and check the events as well great so we are going good and let me quickly show you the last thing that we have related to system again this is also very important so if you have any third party integration you want to do you can go to the system settings and from system settings you can do that integration so suppose if i want to do the ice integration i can go to ice and authentication services if you have a still watch umbrella we manage those integrations you can go and do it there is one activity option as well reporting option as well now cisco dna is supporting good amount of reporting capabilities you can go to the report section and then you have you can generate those report with respect to uh, pdf file or csv file and you have good options as well related to reports so here you can see the all reports like uh, access point client summary inventory network devices swim all these type of reports can be generated in a pdf or csv file finally the activity so this is for audit purpose and better if you can integrate this activity with the apis you can selectively select that particular user and with that user whatever he has done from past one month two month three month all those information you will get from the this place again this because this is nothing has been discovered here this is a blank uh, day zero dna center so we are not seeing much information here but if you want to discover anything we can go to the tools and then we can go to the discovery and then we can go and add the discovery it means what what type of devices you want to search from here so let's just stop here and in the upcoming section we'll focus more on discovery and other design related stuffs in this session we are going to learn understand about dna discovery process now what is happening suppose if you have underlying infrastructure and you want to manage that infrastructure with help of dna as a management plane so you need to discover all those networking devices inside dna now we have two options we can go to the menu we can click to the tools and then we can go to discovery or you can scroll down and you can reach to the discovery page 
the discovery icon will be there you can click there and you will reach to this particular discovery page now once you're inside the discovery page you can click this plus button there and then you can go and discover uh, in terms of cdp in terms of ip addresses or range in terms of lldp but the important thing here is that you have to give the credential minimum you need the cli and snmp credentials so cli credential because what is happening that the dna is checking that those devices are capable of ssh or not because dna has to create session in between dna and the underlying uh, it infrastructure devices so that means it will go and check the ssh capability uh, snmp read write capability as well or snmp 2 or 3 apart from that https http and netconf those are also there so it's better if you go and enable most of these things like cli snmp https and netconf so later on the dna do not have much difficulty to log into the devices and if you want to push any configuration from dna template to those devices now this is quite a user friendly uh, gui dashboard so once you go and put the cli and snmp credential you will see that this grade area they will become pink and once everything is there you can go and in the bottom you have one button discover you can click discover and the discovery process will start correct so let me quickly log into the dna and let me show you this discovery process so we are here now you can see that you have this add discovery so how you can reach you have two option either you can go to the tools and discovery or you can go to the main dashboard and from the main dashboard if you scroll down 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 if you go to the bottom you will see that you have this discovery option so the first thing that we should go and discover the devices and let's try to discover so i want to discover router and switches and i should go and give the ip addresses related to that and if you have range of ip addresses in single shot we can go and give it if you have multiple ip addresses so you can use like this and let me quickly check the ip address to the switch so let's go here and check the ip address related to 3850 switch it's coming up let me check the ip management ip address and the same ip address i'll go and put inside the dna so i got the ip address here let me go and put here so i can copy and paste those ip addresses so one is 23 and other switch is 24 let me go and give that now on bottom you can see that we have the discover button here but before that we should go and add the credential otherwise this will not work so i'll go and add that logging details username and the password we should not use admin as a username or the password save this as a global setting so it will be applicable for all the devices but you should have the integration with AAA or tachygus and from there uh, you can integrate your username and the password credential correct read only read only for snmp save this also as a global setting configuration in the upcoming section i will uh, let you know that what does it mean by global configuration setting then you can go to the read write and click this also as a global setting configuration save this and then you will see these colors will become pink so if i scroll down you can see here that they are becoming pink means these are enable click discovery uh, again we have option that we want to discover now or you can schedule it as well so i don't want to schedule it because i just want to do the discovery click start this discovery process and then dna will start looking for these network devices 
Now clearly you can see on top that we are getting one message that once discovery is completed, go to the inventory and assign these discovered devices to the site. Correct. So here you can see if I go and click, you can see it should be yes, yeah, so you can see the discovery is in progress so far. None has been discovered. And here you can see the success, unreachable, failure, all those science messages you will get. And once it will get discovered, then you will see these devices inside the inventory. All right, so let us give this discovery process some time. Once it will get discovered, then we will go back. We'll go to the design section. We'll design our uh, site hierarchy or site, and then we'll assign these network devices to those particular sites. Great, so let's just stop here. Since we have discovered the devices, in this section, what we'll do, that will go and attach those devices to the site. Now, for that, you have to go to design. From design, you can go to the network hierarchy. Once you're inside the network hierarchy, you can go and create your site design, correct? So what are the things you have? You can see that you can go to add the area, building, and inside the building, you can go and add the floors as well. So first of all, you can see that we can go and add the area. Once we have the area, we can go and add the building name and the full address with the latitude and longitude. Likewise, once you are inside the building, you can go and add the floor. Correct. So add the floor. If you have the floor map, you can upload the floor map as well. You can take the floor map from the prime infrastructure as well. And same you can import here in DNA as well. So DNA is fully supporting the prime infra floor maps as well. Let me go and let me show you that how you can do that. So first of all, you can see that uh, our discovery is successful and we are able to discover only two devices although i have given one device credential for 3850 switch as well which is not discovered because it is unreachable maybe due to ssh issue or maybe routing issue that we can figure out later on now what we can do here we can go to the design first and you have to create the site design so you can go to network hierarchy. Nothing is here. You can go and click add site. So I will go here and click add the site. See, we have this option of add the area, building and floor. So first of all, we want to add the area. Say I'll go and add uh, the same name that we have say, let me do this. San Jose and let's click add here. You can see the parent is global. So now it will come under global Once it is here, then I can go and add the building So now we have the building say building is San Building and there you have to go and add the address. So I will leave the address like this only one five zero w you can see that it is supported by google map and you can see that uh, we can go and put the address so let's click add here and now since we have the building we can go inside the building and then we can go and add the floors inside it correct so now we can expand this building here and then we can go and add so what I want to add, I want to add floor, two floor, one floor for router and one other floor for switch. Say this is floor and we should give the name that will help sand floor for router. And then RF model and upload this means it is asking that if we have the floor plan, we can go and upload without image. Yes. At the moment I don't have so without the image we have added one of the floor here likewise i can go and add one more floor this was this is for switch for example the same naming structure i can use say floor and then this is for switch add it 
Now, since we have created this network hierarchy or the site design, then we can safely go to the menu. From menu, we can go to the provisioning. From provisioning, I can go to the inventory because whenever you discover the devices, it will show you inside the inventory. So now you'll see that unassigned devices, you, you can go and click to the unassigned devices. And this router, I want to assign. So let me go and assign this router to uh, this location and inside this building and inside the floor where we have the router. So you can you can name it like floor one, two, three, etc. So far we haven't set any global information, so we can leave it. And then we can go to the next device. Now we can see it is moved from the unassigned to the signed. Now we can go here and then we can go and click assign. Choose the site. This time I want to choose the other site where we have named as a switch. And then you can go and click next. Again, you can see IP device tracking is the new thing. Then uh, syslog level is six. That is set Cisco test sec, yes. Controller certificate, yes. Those are the default thing. We have SNMP trap receiver is DNA. Syslog server default location is DNA center. Click assign and again, you will see that this will again move to the remove from here and now router inside router floor you can see the router inside the switch floor you can go and switch the uh, you can see that switch great so this is the way we can create the uh, network hierarchy or the site design and then the discover devices we can come here and assign to the devices correct so now devices are correctly assigned to the uh, DNA and you can see this is DNA manage you can see how easily we can do all this discovery and assigning of right? so once you assign these devices to the sites means the devices are managed by DNA and you can go and check the compliant you can go and do good amount of things that a management plan can do with respect to the endpoint devices or the network devices or IT infrastructure once we discover the devices and once we have the site design assign those devices to the site, then the next step here is to do the provisioning. So suppose if we have day end template, means suppose if we have configuration that you want to push to the devices, they are already inside the site. So for that reason, we require to create network profile first, associate these network profile with the site and the template, and then in the provisioning we can go and provision the devices now here you can see in the slide that this is example with respect to wireless but we can go and create the profile network profile related to network functional virtualization product routing firewall switching and wireless now in this example i will go and create the switching profile or we can check routing profile as well there is no much differences in that although the wireless profile they have a little bit of difference while creating the wireless profile you have to go and choose the wireless SSID and then uh, in all the network profile it is required that we should assign the site correct so once you assign the site then your network profile is ready to do the provisioning the provisioning will go and understand in the next section. Let me log into the DNA and let me show you all these steps. So here we are inside the DNA. The first and foremost step we have that we should go and create the template. How we can create the template? You can go to the tools. You can use the template editor. And then um, suppose if I have day n template project, this is the project name. So when I can delete this and I can create the project or let me do this thing. Let me create a new project and inside that project I can show you that how you can create the template. So this is my new project. And I can make this a day in new. 
you can give nice description here as well save this now once i have my project created i can go here and i can add a template now for this example i have one template created in my notepad so let me go and copy and paste that i can go and copy paste this now clearly you can see that this template that we are creating this is using the language we have two template language one is velocity that is apache velocity that's open source we can go and read and learn more about that there are nice cisco blocks available even the apache website is there where we can go and check the velocity language and the other supported language we have jinja mostly we are using the velocity language as a template where we can go and easily create the variables we can apply the uh, different type of loops like for loop while loop if else condition etc so i'll go and give the name say this is for switch something like that we can go and give for switch basic template this is day in yeah and then here you can see that we have option to choose the device now before going to device on top you can see this template type is regular and if you have if you want to create composite template as well you can create it so what does it mean you can create good amount of regular template like template for AAA, template for services template for ntp banner snmp etc and all those templates you can go and collect inside the composite sequence so one composite template you have inside that you have all the small small templates correct so at the moment leave this composite where we want to create the regular simple template and the device i want to apply this template for hub and switches so let me go and select hub and switches let's go back and then you can see the software type i want ios xe click add so now you'll see this blank black screen will come i have already copied the template let me explain this so if you are using this double point symbol that means you are giving the comment so i'm giving the comment here and then interface then the interface name whenever we are using this dollar sign this is for variable so the interface name is variable then the ip address that we are putting here with this interface suppose we want to create some loopback interfaces then the ip address is also variable then the other loopback interface that we want to create is also a variable and the other ip address is also as a variable so that means in this template we have complete four variables and then we'll see that how it can be used like when you push this template to the devices it will ask you that oh you want to push the variable so first of all before doing anything you can go here and you can save this and once you save this then you should to go and commit this now because we are at this point what you can do now that you can go and check the form setup but I'll show you the most useful use case as well. And you can see these are your variables. Then you can go and create the simulation as well. Simulation means that when you push this particular template to device, how it look like. So you can give say name as a sim one. And then once you put all this information, say, uh, let me write here, go back one, one dot one dot one dot one, then, um loop back to two dot two dot two dot two and if you go and see this how it look like before pushing this template to any of the devices you can see the configuration will look like this okay so now you have the placeholders for your variables but we don't want this let me cancel this because we want to use this existing template inside network profile so now our template is up and ready let's go and uh, let's go to the design section where we have the network profile option i can go to network profile once we are inside the network profile i can go and add the profile i want to create this for the switches i can give the name as i say 
basic and then the loop back this is for switching and because this is for switching so i'll show that what does it mean but this profile is related to switching we don't have pnp or onboarding template we want this as a day n template so click to day n and then here you can see that you have plus sign click there device type so since this is switching so we are get, getting device type as a hub and switch and then the template that we have created this is for switch basic click save now once you create this template you can see that we need to go um, once we create the network profile called basic profile uh, basic loopback we should go and assign this particular network profile to the site where we want to push the configuration of the template so now you can see that we are applying this basic loop back to this particular site and our template is done so template part we have done now next section what we will do that will go and apply this template to the network devices after creating the network profile the next task we have is to do the provisioning now it's again easy you can go to the menu we can click to provisioning you can go to the inventory now key thing here is this that once you are inside the inventory and once all the devices they are assigned to the site then what you need to do here is that you can go on the top you can change the focus as uh, provisioning and then you can provision those devices that means what does it mean that you are doing the provisioning that means that that particular network profile that we have created in the design section that is going to deploy it with this particular devices those are there in that particular site so we have option actually we can go and select the select one device or we can go and uh, select a bunch of devices with respect to what type of network profile we have created so for example if we have created the profile related to switching obviously we should go and select the switches so let's go and do the provisioning now here you can see i can go to the um, menu and once you are inside the menu you can go to the provisioning go to the inventory and first thing i want to do here just for sake of simplicity i want to change the focus so from inventory to provisioning and we can go inside that particular location where we have the devices so we have the switches i can go here to the switches and then you can see that inside this location so sand floor switch i have two switches and then you can go and click action go to the provisioning and then assign device oops not that one let me cancel it because it's already assigned so go to the action and go to the provisioning and then uh, we want to do the provisioning provision of devices correct so let me quickly select these first otherwise you can see the options will not come so once you click so once you click provision devices so what will happen it will start the workflow and we want to apply to these devices belonging to these sites yes go next and now if you go and click here you can see that in this particular location we have two switches and for both the switches we'll get all the four variables so first of all if provisioning these templates if uh, again if it is already there i want to um, push again or maybe some updates are there so we can update with the new template if some some configuration is already there again with this option it will go and write it one more time so there's no harm copy running to the startup yes interface name i'll go and give say loop back uh, let's give some names say 41 and the ip address i'll give 41 41 41 41 then loop back 42 
and then I be I just I'll give 42 42 42 42 likewise I can go here and let me copy this loop back name to 9300 and here I will go and give loop back 43 and the IP 43 43 43 43 and then the loop back 44 and the IP correct so now we have filled that uh, form with all the variables it's okay we can go and next we can click deploy we want to deploy now so it will go and start the provisioning cycle you can see here we have the provisioning status as well so if you want to see the status the details that you are doing the provisioning you can see one second ago and if you go and click here you can check the detail so configuration is in progress I can go here click see details and we can see the provisioning details so you can see complete workflow and where we reach inside the workflow so if I go here you can see success and if I go and click the success details if you go and click that you can see again great amount of detailed informations we have so this is something uh, day zero type of configuration as well and behind the scene how the DNA is re uh, reacting with installing the certificate doing the communication with devices all those things it is showing but here it is failed due to some reason this configuration is not pushed inside this particular device so that fail status also we can go and check why it has been failed and it has been failed due to these re reasons so validating the service parameters validating user intent provisioning to this site this template is not proper it's okay so we can see both the condition failed and success as well and in the success condition now we can go to that particular device let's verify that those templates that we have created has been pushed successfully or not so you can click to that device you can reach to uh, run command what we want we want to go and check the these loopbacks have been created there or not because we have pushed from the template and now here if you go and check show so after pushing the configuration we want to check that those configuration has been pushed to the devices or not we have multiple option we can go to the switch click to that switch and then you can go and check the command runner inside command runner then you can go and check show ip int brief and then you can see that your loop back 41 and 42 is there correct that's the one way other way that you can go to the configuration from here itself and then you can go and check loop back let's see if we have yep so you can see that loop back 41 and 42 is there now Cisco DNA has given one nice feature related to compliance check so once you are inside the provisioning and inventory as a focus you can see that one column is there related to compliance and if you go inside that it is checking the compliance with respect to started versus running configuration check software image critical security advisories maybe if we have application visibility those if we have fabric enable those checks as well now here i can see that with respect to a startup and running configuration in a startup we have three zero two lines and then running we have three zero seven lines so that means that five lines are missing and here you can see that uh, the red mark this is the timeline so when we have done the configuration change so at this point of time we have done the config configuration change and you can see that which new lines has been pushed from the script so these are the new lines these five new lines have been pushed uh, to this particular switch with respect to any script and that's why it is showing you the differences here
correct? So this is the way that we can uh, push the template with help of network profile and then we can go and verify either from the CLI or from the configuration itself or even we can go and check the compliance as well. So multi multiple places ways that we can go and verify as well. So far we have discovered the router and switches. Let's continue and let us discover the WLC as well. Again, the process will be the same. We can go to the tools. Inside tools, we have the option to run the discovery. Now we can go to discovery. And once we are inside the discovery, you can see the discovered devices here. We can go and add one discovery for WLC. I can go and give the name WLC discovery. IP range for the WLC. So I can go and give the management IP for WLC. And then because we have only one, so I can go and give the same IP in the source and destination. Whereas the credential and SNMP things are the same. Now we can go and start the discovery for WLC. Now this is in progress, task have been submitted and we can wait. Now you can see that initially we have a route switch discovery and three devices are reachable. Now we are searching for WLC, search is in progress. We can wait. Now once this discovery will be successful, obviously it will be seen here inside the inventory. So we can go to the provisioning and inventory and you can see the WLC will come pop up here. So now you can see that WLC has been discovered and it is telling that there is missing netcon port and we haven't added the netcon port while doing the discovery. That option will be there that we can go and add. So now what we can do here that we can go here and we can assign this WLC to the site. So let's choose a site and we can go here. We can go to the sand building. And for example, I want to assign here where we have the switches. So assign this. And once we've done the assignment, what will happen? Because since uh, we are discovering, we have discovered the WLC and then we are assigning WLC to the site. The next thing here is this, that uh, the telemetry will be on. We know that with respect to wire wireless, the telemetry feature is on by default. That means that the WLC will go and search all its APs. So whatever associated APs we have with respect to this WLC, that will also come and you can see those discovered and populated inside DNA as well. And that's the key thing we have uh, with the uh, WLC. When we are adding the WLC inside the DNA, it will add all the APs as well by default. Now, one important point we have here that you can see that because we haven't enabled the netcon feature, so there may be chances that the DNA having difficulty to using netcon port 830 to log into the WLC and um, you know do some stuffs. So what we can do that we can go back to our discovery one more time. Now let's go back to the discovery and then add this port number. So we can go back to the tools and discovery. And once we have the discovery related to WLC, we can go there. And here what we want that we want to rediscover this one more time. But this time, what I want, that I want to add one more port here. So let's go here and let's check if I can go and add because I want to add one more um, port here that is related to netconf is added here now. Apply this. 
so icmp cnmp cli and netconf is disabled i want to add this netconf so let's go here copy and edit clone of wlc i'm running this one more time because i just wanted to enable uh, one more feature here related to netconf so let's go here to the netconf port is 830 save this cli login but we have this login already here so i can i can cancel this i simply want to add the net where you can see this is there in the bottom click discover one more time and start this and meanwhile it is working we can wait so it took few seconds and let's go back to the inventory once we are inside the inventory we can safely go and go to the switch we are inside the switch and now you can see uh, the wlc is there correct now we can give this some time so associated APs will come and pop inside the uh, inventory as well. So this is the way that we can go and discover the W. We know this point that all the modern STN framework, they are supporting plug and play option. So either it's a Cisco SD-WAN, Cisco Viptel SD-WAN, it's a Cisco DNA for enterprise network or for the campus area network they are supporting plug and play now what is plug and play as the name suggests that you can go and connect your switches to a network and then that switch will get a full configuration it will be up and running and it will join the fabric or it will join the network because anyway this course is related to non fabric management but the switch will get the configuration um, it should have something called day zero configuration and it will be up and running later on the same day as well we can go and push the day in configuration or rest of the configuration as well so how this process work by default it's actually very easy and straightforward so let me show you that first and i'll come back then so here you can see that i have the switch where by default so if the switch is coming from cisco there is plug and play agent is there by default so once you connect that switch to the interface to the network port then the plug and play agent will be there now with help of this plug and play what will happen that somehow he has to reach to his dhcp server or somehow he has to resolve the dns or even if we have a smart account and your dna and a smart account they are synced together so the story here is this that somehow he has to reach to the dna center from dna it will go and start its plug and play operation that means once dna will recognize this device that this is a valid device this is a device i i want to help to do the day zero configuration once that particular authentication will take place then my pnp server that's the dna center it will go and push first of all it will establish a secure communication connection in between that and then as per our day zero configuration as per our template that we have created as an onboarding template those configuration will get pushed to the device and then that device will be up and running so in this case on other word you can see that that uh, somehow the gateway devices they can work as a dhcp server and that's the reason let, let me go back here one step so i can show you that in in our lab we have isr router 
and that router we can go and enable the DHCP services particularly DHCP option 43 now with this option and there are some configuration as well where we are embedding the code related to DNS enter so we are giving the information about DNS enter so whenever the agent will come and query to that gateway router or gateway switch where we have the DHCP server enabled then that query will be forwarded to DNS enter and then DNS enter will take care of the rest of the actions correct and the same theory you can see here by default all the devices all the interfaces in the switch they are part of VLAN 1 and inside VLAN 1 that process will start now what is happening here so once the plug and play so once we connect the switch for plug and play then DNS enter will learn first of all its serial number so what will happen if you go to the uh, provisioning and plug and play then you will find that you have one serial number here you can see that serial number is listed and we will see this in the lab as well so you'll find that your serial number will be listed there what we need to do that just select the serial number and click claim once you click claim then the pnp workflow will start so you have to assign the site assign the configuration do the provisioning template and that's it the things will be taken care of from the DNS center once you plug and play will be up and running and successful that means that your device will be onboarded successfully and you can see that device inside that particular site with the day zero configuration so now this thing we can perform the lab task so let's stop here and in the next section we'll go and perform the lab related to this let us make our system ready for plug and play so at this moment we know that in our dna we have few devices which is already discovered so here you can see that we have 3850 switch here now first of all i want to do the pnp for this device so let me go here and remove this device from the list i don't want this device part of my inventory so here you can see that i have option to delete the device yes um, and you can see that we have this option of configuration cleanup as well but no problem we can remove that configuration from our template as well that i have there in the notepad i want to make this device ready for pnp now we can go here back so let me go and refresh this page first so if i refresh still it is in progress seems but you can go to the same place so let me show you the order you can go to the provisioning and you can see that plug and play and let's see at the moment nothing is there no serial number has been discovered uh, from dna to start the plug and play correct so we will do that and now you can see that i can go to 3850 and i can make that 3850 ready for plug and play so i'll go and remove all the configuration all the certificates all the keys whatever keys that it it is there because whenever the dna is discovering the device it is it is pushing those keys inside that in, in terms of generating the rsa keys and then the certificate registration etc so those authentication process those trust relation actually is building behind the scene and um, if you want to make a device just for lab purpose to do the plug and play then we can go and remove all those configurations and the keys etc so these are the configurations simply i'll copy and paste to 3850 to make that device ready for plug and play now what will happen at the moment the plug and play agent will get kicked inside 3850 it will go and check its gateway now inside gateway you can see this is the configuration related to dhcp and you can see that option 43 where we are giving the ip address for the dna and you can see that the protocol is 80 and 
some other code as well is like uh, some other code I can show you in the PPT slide that what does all these code means. So in next section, I will show you this meaning of the code, but the agent will go and contact to the DNS center and then DNS center will take care about that. Okay, so this configuration I need to do inside the ISR router. So let me go and log into the ISR. I have the ISR 4451 here and I can make the ISR device as a DHCP server for the switch PNP processes. Correct. Next, I can go to the switch 3850 and we can start the PNP inside there. Now, it's very important to understand that once you are starting the PNP, you should not press any enter key inside that particular switch. So if you are here, and if you are doing all these commands, if PNP is getting started, system configuration modified, no, confirm. Proceed to reload. Now it is, you can see now it is, reload has been started. Do not do any change here. So from here, the next task we have that we should go and create the template inside the DNA as well. So for that, I have one template here that I want to create as an onboarding template. And we know that uh, when we are creating the template, if we are giving the dollar sign there, that means that we want to create the variable, correct? So we can go here and if you go and refresh this guy here, you should see the serial number here because if you do not see the serial number, reclaim process will not work. Meanwhile, let's go back here and let's go to the tools and let's go to the template editor. I can go here and I can create onboarding template inside that. I can go and add one template. This template name, I will go and give 3850 and PNP. This is onboarding and the devices. We want to onboard hub and switches. Let's go back and select the image. That is the software type iOS XE. Add it. Now, once we add it, then we'll go and put that configuration that we have. So this is the configuration. In this configuration, you can see that uh, this is the basic one. Configuration where host name treated as a variable. Apart from that, if you go and check the topology, you'll find that the switch 3850 has one connection going to uh, line 300 switch and one connection that is going to the, the router. Now we have one management interface called Gigi00 and this is the gateway. All of these things also we can go and create as a, a variable. So here you can see that we have the interface name and the description also made as a variable. And this is IP address ISR and the subnet that's point to point. So this IP is basically related to the connection between myself and router where we are running the OSPF. So I should know this IP subnet and everything. Then what about the management IP? Because we, we are going to get the IP address, so let me show you this DHCP, where it is working. So we should have this guy here that will give, get the IP from the DHCP server. Once it will get the IP, then obviously it will go and uh, communicate to the, the DNA center, correct? Great, so we can go further and we can save this template. So let me save this. 
and then we should do the commit so I can go and do the commit for this template do the commit now meanwhile our PNP is in progress it is going on behind the scene now we should go to the design section where so let me go here and now you can see one critical issue here now we can go to the design section and we can go to the uh, we have the profile here and we want to create a profile for day zero I can go create add profile related to switching and here we can go and give the name PNP 3850 this is the switching this is day zero that's right we can go and add the device type here hub and switch 3850 PNP the good thing here is that we can not only add the day zero but same place we can add the day in as well so we have one day in template as well related to this switch and just for an example i'm showing you here that you can go and add this as well so we have maybe basics or maybe this is for the switch basic etc that you can go and add correct great now what we can do we can go and save this and once we are here to the pnp we should go and assign this template to the site and we know that our site is the floor switch click save click yes and now we are good now let me quickly go back to the provisioning and the inventory just to see that how many devices we have inside that floor so you can see that these devices that we have discovered and if you go and click plug and play still we are not seeing any serial number that we want to claim correct so you can see the dashboard that is still we are not getting uh, the device that should come here and we can do the claim so we have option here to uh, learn that source as a user defined or from the network but if we go back here and if we go and check our script that we have copied and pasted, uh, let me go back to this location and you can see that uh, trust pool is okay zero touch is okay those are okay and right arrays and once we are doing right arrays, so that's the key here so once you are doing the right areas reload and then no so let's see uh, right image then reload then no and then confirm yes it should confirm it and those are the steps that we should use now if still we are not able to find this no problem we can do one thing that we have the console to that particular switch let's see here so from here let me try to log into 3850 switch i just wanted to remove all the configuration and make this switch ready for pnp because generally what will happen that you need to go and connect your device here you see you don't need to erase everything and anything and do this thing just for lab practice we are doing it so let me go and erase let me console to this switch it is all the configuration and let me come back to this particular switch so what i have done that i console that switch and the same command so here you can see that the same command that we have run via the ssh i have consoled to that switch and i ran that same command so on the top to the bottom you can see same command that we have in the notepad i executed here and now this switch is rebooting and it is ready for pnp so you can see that it is ready for pnp the point here that we should not press enter otherwise the pnp process will get interrupted now let's go back to the dns center now let's see if we are able to get the serial number here because once it will get the serial number then we can go and do the claim process
So we can wait for a few more seconds. And now you can see that the switch is rebooting, but you can see that PNP is started here. Now you can see that it is going for PNP with port number 80. And now the DNS center should discover this particular device. So now let's go back to the DNS center. And inside DNS center, it should fulfill all the queries that is going on behind the scene. So let's go and check the DNS center. Let me go and click there. And here you can see that I have one serial number that is coming, requesting here. It is in unclaim position. We can go and click to the action, click claim. And then you can see that workflow has been started. So what we need here is that just follow this process and the device name, obviously we have created the template and while pushing the template, we can go and give the device name, but this device name is just the process device name. Then you can go and assign the site. We know that the site we have is the floor switch. Apply to this site. By default, it will get picked here. You can see the serial number, product ID, etc. Then go to next where you want to assign the configuration. Here you can see assign configuration is PNP that we have created with that day zero configuration and plus inside network profile we have attached it. Correct. Now we have option to assign with the golden image as well. And you can leave this as default as well. So there is no problem. Later on if you want to upgrade the image that we can do it. Go next and now you will see that it will ask you whatever variables that we have created inside the template. So hostname I'll go and give 3850PNP today or any, any name, just the placeholder. Then the interface name, interface name here you can see that we have interface name and that's the point to point interface and it should be very carefully given here. So I should know that which interface is connected with the ISR because this is related to ISR interface that we have created as variable. And I have that in my notes. So here you can see that the switch router to switch connection. So this is the interface that is belonging to the switch and gig 00 uh, maybe router. So 1024 is the connection and again I can verify this because if we give this parameter wrong then a problem will happen. So what I will do here I can go to the router and inside the router we can go and check show CDP neighbor so at least we can get, get the information about uh, 9300 you can see the switch so yeah 1024 so that's correct let's go back here and give the interface name is this then the description connection to ISR and you can give any good description then the IP address now Again, this should also be right, and we can go and check sure an interface gig 003. So 2.1 here, that means the other side will be 2.2. So I can go here and give IPS 2.2 and net mask, you know, 2.5.2.5.2.5.2.52, because this is point to point OSPF related network. Great, click next and I can see that some problem is there. Error, now you can see, and this is good. So what it is telling that this error we are getting because inside the design section, network setting, we don't have the configuration related to the global parameters or the CLI parameters. So that's 
cool and we can't do any claim because it will throw an error so we should go here we should go to the design once you go to the network settings you will see that we haven't given any configuration related to oops device credentials so let's go there and let's go and add the parameters so this is there and let's save this so login credential while we have done the discovery we have added that then i have read only for snmp and this should be inherited correct this should be inherited to the lower level lower level means that at the site level save this now what we can do we can go here we can go to the building we can go to the switch and once we are at the switch level I'll get this pop-up message what it will tell that setting this plate with the above icon have been inherited from the parent to site okay yes i want this i want to do this inheritance from the global to this particular site level click save okay now it seems okay now again we can go to the provisioning and plug and play so I can go here to the provisioning, plug and play. You can go here, you can see the 40% is there. We can go and click claim. And again, we have to repeat that process. So no problem. We'll do that process one more time. Here also an interesting fact that while you are doing this process, and if you find any difficulty, any problem related to configuration, then it will again throw an error but it will tell you exact which line we have the issue and then let me go and give the mask to 252 the interface name is i should give the exact correct interface name otherwise problem may happen so I can go to the notepad where I have the interface exact name 1024. Let me verify here that the IP address should be correct. So this is 198192.1. That also need to be modified. The interface name should be modified and the host name is 3850 switch for PNP. Okay, so everything is okay here. And we can go click next. And now you can see there is no error. You can click claim. It will take a while. It will take two to two to three minutes. And if any problem is there during the configuration related to anything, one device is successfully claimed. It is showing that one device is successfully claimed. But if any issue is there, then it will give you again red mark. You can go click to that red mark. You can check exactly what issue at what point, and then further from there, you can troubleshoot. All right, so let's wait for a few seconds. Now you can see here that claim process is in progress. The IP address is 198.1812.2, and source is network now it is 70 percent again it will take some time to complete meanwhile we can go back to the router and here we can go and check show ip dhcp bindings because it should show something so you can see that the released address it has is 128.3 correct so that's also one check while doing the provisioning you can check here again it, it will take some more time from here and then uh, once it is completed obviously the green sign will come that the process has been completed then we can go back to the device and we can check it correct so again wait for a few more seconds 
now you can see that device name has been changed now the device name is switch pnp even the ip address is also changed the ip address is 128.3 that's from the dhcp release correct and if i go and refresh this so you can see that provisioning is one this is completed and all you can see that is one you can go and check the workflow it will show you big you know complete workflow is including all these steps what whatever things has happened so you can go and check the template here is the template it's complete detail you will get from this workflow great even you can go and check the history as well so once it is configured we can go back to the inventory and inside inventory we know that where it is so here we have the 3850 switch pnp it's non-compliant and then we can go click here we can go and check the command runner and all we can go here to the command runner and once it is there you can see the name has been changed show ip interface brief just to check this thing um, the ip in interface brief and you can see that the template push is there but let's check the ip address over the interface so 128.3 this is the way that we can go and do the pnp so once we have the day zero template then we can go and push the day end template as well correct so let's stop here and let's move to the other sections great so just now we have completed lab related to plug and play let's do the quick summary and understand about option 43 as well now to pnp work perfectly we we have to have a dhcp server we can make dhcp server to any router or l3 switch or it can be your info blocks or any type of dhcp server in the infrastructure so what is happening that from that dhcp server we are uh, pushing or we are putting the configuration option 43 and that option 43 will take that request so we have the pnp agent and you can think as a pnp client as well so the switch in our case it was 3850 so that pnp a plug and play client that we have it will go and query to the dhcp server it will get the ip reach to the a dna and from dna the rest of the plug and play things will kick off and all the workflow and everything we have already seen so in that case we have option 43 that we need to go inside the dhcp scope and enable option 43 now here you can see that we have one long string inside option 43 where we have some character initially and then we have the dna or dnac ip address and then we are giving the port number so here you can see that 5a 1d b 2k 4 like that it will start 5a stand for pnp dhcp id 1d stand for the debugging is on 1n for debugging is off and then you can see that we have the token so we have b2 b2 means uh, it's a token for ipv4 then we have k4 is a protocol for http and then we are using uh, i i again with i we are giving the ip address of the dnac or remote dnac and then we have final j option that is we are providing the port number correct again you can see the explanation here about that string but this is the key that we should scope that request properly so the request will reach to the dna and rest of the configuration that we have seen earlier it will get fulfilled again you can see the configuration snippet here and in our case we have little bit different configuration so we have almost all these things but we are using our dnac ip and they, then we are excluding some addresses as well so please refer the lab go through it once and twice and you will understand the plug and play how it is working inside the cisco dna
In terms of non-fabric, we can integrate DNA with ICE as an external authentication server. And one of the important use cases we have to use ICE as an external authentication using Tachycus. So in this section, what we are going to do that first of all, we'll go and do the day zero deployment for ICE. Once we do the day zero deployment for the ICE, then we'll go and create the policy, policy sets, etc. In, in the lab section. But before that, what I'll do that, I will explain you all the theory behind that, that exactly what we are going to do in the lab section, what are the steps involved. And once we complete the lab, so by the end of that section, you will see that how we can go and verify uh, as well. In this session, we are going to learn that how we can go and do the day zero deployment for IC. We have IC 3.0. So first of all, what you need once you have your VM access to the IC image, you have to go and type set up command. And then you can go and give the host name. So suppose I go and give the host name as IC. Then you have to go and give the IP address. So let me go and provide the IP address. You don't need to press twice. Uh, you have to give this IP only once. And suppose if you have any problem doing this again, you can press Control C, and you can see that you, you will move to the setup mode. Correct. So go to the setup mode. Give the host name as ICE, then the IP address 198.18.133.27, the net mask. In my subnet, I'm using these net mask. Then the default gateway that I have. Then you want to configure IPv6. Default is no. I don't want to do that. Enter the default DNS domain. That's the cloud.cisco.com. And then the name server. Name server IP is this. Then it will ask you secondary name server. I don't have at the moment, then it will ask you the NTP address. So we can go and provide the NTP address same as name server in my case. Do you have another NTP? No, I don't have. Intersystem time zone, that's the UTC. Enable SSH service, and this is very important. You should enable the SSH services. So then I can go and select yes for that. And then it is asking about the username. So by default username is admin. And for that we can go and give the password. So I can go and give the password. And now you can see that copying first CLI user to the first ICE, uh, admin GUI user. And the process in detail will start now. So what will happen that, that uh, the uh, ICE will go and start all its services related to administration services, monitoring, etc. I mean, that particular service will get installed and it will take 15 to 20 minutes. Maybe it will take much time as well. It, it will take up to 30 minutes of time. And after that, we can go log into the GUI and from there, uh, we can go and start managing our ICE infrastructure. Correct? Right? So let's give this particular session some time. And once the once all the services will get installed, we can go and verify from the CLI and then we will log into the GUI and then we'll check the rest of the things related to the lab task. Now let us understand the theory and the step behind the external integration. So integration between ICE and DNA and ICE as external authentication server. In this case, the protocol that we are using is the Tachycus. Great, so first of all, we need to integrate DNA with ICE. And what are the steps involved? You will watch this in the recording. So you have to go uh, inside DNA, you have to go inside system settings, and then you have to choose the option authentication and policy server. Then you have to give the detail about ICE. So what's the IP, what's the secret key, what's the FQDN, and then you need to enable the Tachycus option as well. By default, the protocol radius will be enabled. So enable that, 
give the shared key that's a step number one from the dna side now we have deployed the dna and then the first step that we have to do go to administration and deployment and enable the device admin service that's the first mandatory thing the second mandatory thing we have is to check the license related to admin services so and here you can see that this is uh, ice 2.7 or um, before and this is ice 3.0 ice 3.0 will look like this that's the snapshot i have given here now you can go and check the licensing and in licensing you should have the device admin enabled that's the second check then the third thing we need to do from the ice is that add the dna inside ice so add the dna and then give the tachycus authentication services check mark give the shared key here as well and save it now once you save it then that means that now ice is knowing that dna is part of its network devices or network device in case if you have multiple uh, dna Suppose if you have a cluster of TN, etc., either you can change the subnet here or you can go and add one by one. Correct? So once we add that, and this radius authentication check mark is not mandatory, so optional. So once you add the Tachycus authentication, then at least 20% of the lab task is done. Correct? And you can see here that how this look like in inside the uh, older version before 3.0 ice Great now the next thing that we need to do now we have option we can use ice with active directory integration and those user groups We can create the rule or if we have external users so we can create external user group and we can add identities so external user identities inside the external user identity group and then we can create the role we know that uh, in dna we have network admin observer super admin telemetry etc like that we can go and create here as well so we can create the identity group and inside that we can add the identities because these identities and group we are going to call in the next phase when we'll create the policy set now here you can see that i created two and in the lab i have i'm going to create actually admin one and observer one part of dna admin and the observer group user group now next thing and from here your tachycus configuration will start so we need to go to the work center inside that work center go to the policy element inside the result section we have tachycus command set and tachycus profile now in tachycus command set if you go there by default there is one rule that deny all commands but there we can go and add permit all so for that you have to check mark this thing like permit any command that is not listed suppose if you want if you have list of command so you can click this add button here Correct, and then you can give your list of command like show IP and brief, show IP route, etc., etc. So that user, when you assign this rule in the authorization section, so that user will be authorized to use only those many commands. Correct. So once you create this, the next thing is that we can go and create the Tachycus profile. So now you can see that this is created and we can go and create the tachycus profile while creating the tachycus profile it's very important that we have to use some sort of uh, uh, attribute the tachycus attribute and i have listed the tachycus attributes here let me go yeah, so here so you can see that you have to give the uh, you have the mandatory selection here you can see in the bottom let me highlight so because this is the critical piece we should understand so you can go and create tachycus profile you can create profile like network admin observer telemetry etc then you can go and give the command so you can give say default privilege one and then the maximum privilege 15 in between whatever rules you want to add you can add here Correct, and then in the bottom you can go and give the attribute name Cisco AV pair and then the value this value is nothing but the role and again the role is defined as per the DNA so role is I have listed here super admin network observer etc correct so you can create the 
Takakus profile, uh, like super admin, observer, telemet uh, observer, telemetry, etc. Like those, uh, or maybe employee, contractor, guest users, anyways, guest is user, why they will get any type of access. So like that, we can categorize our Takakus profile because this Takakus profile and the Takakus command set we are going to use in the next section when we will go and create the policy set. Now again, you are in the work center and inside work center, you can go to device admin policy set. This policy set rule that we are creating, this is with respect to Takakus. So by default, there will be one default rule. You can edit that, it will work fine. Or you can go and you can, you can go to this policy set section. There is one plus button. You click that plus button and you can create your own as well. In this lab, I have used the default and the default authentication policy. Here you can see that in default authentication policy, you have all user ID store, reject, reject, drop. Anyways, if the authentication will get successful, then it will go and check the authorization policy. We are not going to do any with anything with the authorization policy, local exception and authorization policy, global exception, but we'll go and create the rule related to authorization policy in the bottom. So in the lab, I'm going to create two rule, one for the admin and one for the observer, but you have to mention each and everything here. So you should go and call the conditions properly. And these conditions are nothing but the identity group and users that we have created, then we can go and give the command set like permit all or some lim limited command. And then we can go and call the shell profile. So once our authorization rule is ready, authorization, uh, yeah, this is the authorization policy. So once the authorization policy is ready, our authentication policy is ready. That means we are very much good. The next task we have after this is that we should go back to the DNA. Correct, go back to the DNA, go to the system setting users and external authentication, because once you go there, so you have to go back and make sure that your ICE and DNA integration is showing active, but you, go, you can go back to the system and then the users, so here you can see that you have the users. So you can go to the external authentication and you need to check mark this enable external user. At the moment you will go and check mark this, you will see that in the bottom, the AAA server will come. Below this AAA, you can see the shared secret. So you have to give the shared secret correctly. Once you give the shared secret as per the Takakus profile that we have created for the users is going to appear and the rules like network admin, super admin, telemetry, etc. It will start working. It will start authenticating that. So once we reach there, then we can go and whatever identity group and inside identity group, whatever users we have with those users, we can go and do the login to the DNA. Once we log in, then those things should be captured inside ICE live log. So in the lab, you will see that I'll show you that you can go to the operation live logs and you can check the logs. Uh, again, you can check the complete flow related to authentication and authorization and that will complete our lab and discussion related to ICE integration with DNA and ICE is working as a authentic uh, external authenticator server with respect to Takakus protocol. After the ICE installation, when we go and log into ICE, we'll find everything is blank there in that dashboard. Now what we need here that you can go to the administration. Once you're inside the administration, you can go and check the deployment because uh, inside the deployment, you can see that it is a standalone mode and we need the FQDN. So here you can see that FQDN that we have. This FQDN we need inside DNA to do the integration from DNA to ICE perspective. And the other thing that we need to do here that we have to have enable this, enable device admin services. That's one mandatory check that we have. You enable that, click save, and we should go and verify the licenses. So the licenses should be, so we should have the license 
called the admin device up and in use otherwise this feature will not work so once we do this basic check from the ice perspective we can go back to our dns center inside dns center you can go to the system settings and inside system setting you will see that inside settings we have option to go and add the ice or the AAA. So here you have the authentication and policy server option. Click add. And then you give the server IP address. Once you give the server IP address, just give the shared key. Check this Cisco ICE server on. Give the username and the password. Give that FQDN. And now if you check here the subscriber name basically we uh, use for the pixie grid integration you can give any name say so int or something so dnac ice and then that is the integration then we can go and check the advanced setting inside advanced setting we should go and enable the tachycus services click apply these things already we have discussed earlier in the PPT in the theory section. So these are the steps that we need to follow. Now once I will find that the status in between the DNA and ICE is active, that means at the moment what is happening that DNA is trying and creating the secure tunnel in between the ICE. They are checking their certificates and then the DNA is going is registering actually ice inside its database correct and now you can see this is in progress but if you go after a few seconds if we refresh the page you'll find this status is active and here you can see the protocol is radius and tackers now next phase here is that we can go to the user and we can enable the external user authentication but before doing that we should go and do the rest of the configuration with respect to ice so now what we need to do here, we can go to the administration and network devices. So let me go to the network devices from the administration. And once you are inside the network devices, you need to add DNA. So it is already added here. So let me do one thing. Let me go and delete this because I will add and I'll show you that how you can go and add it from scratch. So here you can go and you can add the DNAC then you can give the ip so dnac ip is this since we have only one ip address if we have cluster of ip addresses whip ip addresses etc you can go and add with some specific subnet here one ip that's why we are using class 32 then we can go and enable the tachycus authentication setting and then we can give the shared password here as well click submit so this setting is done now next thing we want to create the users so users assigned to user group and then go to tachycus and create the policies that we have discussed earlier so now you can go and you can see the device administration you'll find that you have the user identity group we know that what type of identity groups we have inside dna correct now let me quickly show you that so if you go back to the dna and it should be active till now so it's active if you go to the users and if you go to user management so you'll see everything is internal user but if you go to role based access control and you can see that you have super admin network admin observer and telemetries correct great now let's go back to the ice and what we want will create a user group say dnac admin that's one likewise i'll go and create one more for observer just for our testing purpose so other is the observer and then we'll go to the identities i'll create two identity here when i'll go and create for uh, dnac admin so suppose this is admin one like one two three four five we can go and just assign the names let me give the password as well 
like that i can go and and i should give the correct password otherwise obviously the dna will throw the error yep and then here from the user group you can go and select the dnac admin as a group submit great now i'll go and create one more this time i'll give the name as the observer one obs one and here also i can go and give the password uh, let's give the password and the password and the password great this time this is part of which particular group this is part of the dnac observer click submit great now the next thing that we should do here is that we should go to the same place and you should go to the results because uh, what we need to do here that we need to create the tachycus command set so allow all admin this is the command if you check here that means you are allowing everything likewise by default you will see that there is deny all and here we are creating allow all now if we have some selectivism like you want to allow the observer command set etc then you can go here and you can click plus and then you can go and give permit and then the command you are allowing show with the star that means all the show commands you can go and save this correct that means that you are giving this only so permit any command that is not listed below now this is listed below and you can use like this correct now we need to go and create the tackles profile so here i will go and create two profile one profile for dnac admin correct and this is the shell command and for the admin i want to go and give privilege as privilege 15 correct now in bottom you can see that we have custom attributes that we should go and give the value for so for custom attribute we should go and give say cisco av pair and let's go back we need to give this attribute as a mandatory give the name and then go back and give the role as well so i'm going to assign two role one is for super admin and one is for observer so let's go here and let's assign the role for super admin click here and then we can submit great likewise i can go and create say dnac observer here what you can do that uh, you can select actually the default um, default privilege is say from one and the maximum privilege 15 and then if you have any oops if you have any access control list that you can give timeout and those things you can assign correct then you can go here and let's go here and give the mandatory and then the rest of the things so i can go and check the rule as a observer rule correct and let's go and put the value as a observer rule and then we can go back and give this is called av pair correct so let's give this value here cisco av pair copy it and paste there great now this also we can go and save so let's save this scroll down submit this so now our tachycus profile is also ready the next thing we need to do is to go and create the policy set and the rule inside that now here i can go and create my own as well or i can use default as well correct so i can click here to policy set and then i i will start creating my own or i can go here now here you will see that we have the authentication and authorization policy we can use this default authentication policy as well there is no problem then inside the authorization policy 
I can go and create two. So let's create, let's click this plus sign and a rule for, oops. So by mistake, I click this plus sign. That's why it is coming like this, but no problem. Uh, let's close this first. Let me rename the name. First of all, I want to make this rule clear that this is rule for admin and then we'll go and create authorization rule for the observer. So click admin and then click plus sign. This is the condition. Once you go there, then we have to go and check our, let's click here in the middle and then click to continue. First time if you'll do, it will try to guide you that what are the things you need. Go to the identity group name and then this is equal to first of all for admin so i want to create the um, rule for admin and then i can scroll a little down you can see admin and you can click use it so it's working and we'll see that we have this then we can go and give the command set so command set we have created allow all admin and then we can go and give the shell profile that we have created for the admin. Now we can click here, save it, or we can go and add one more rule here. This time I want to add for the observer. So let's add for the observer. Give the name as OBS. Then we can go, likewise we can give the condition. So we can go and add the condition here. Let's go and add the condition. So again, we have the identity group and inside identity group, we have the name. In this name, we'll go and this will be equal to the OBS that we have created. Click use this. Now, once this is done, we can go and give the command set. This is for observer. And then we can go and, oops, we can go and give the OBS shell profile. Now it is very much done. Let's just scroll here down, click save. And now you can see that we have completed our sections related to configuring the ICE related to TACACUS configuration and profile. Now we, what we need to do next is that we should go here to the DNS center first. We should go to the external authentication. And inside external authentication, we need to go and check the setting related to the triple server so we we should have the triple server that that is ice here it should come come up and uh, let me go and first of all enable the external authentication see once i have done that then you can see this triple server is coming and we should go and give the shared key here so let me go and give the shared key and if you click view advanced setting, you can see that we have the TACACUS option. It should be enabled. We can go and click update and our configuration and settings related to the ICE, related to DNAC is done. So the testing purpose, what we'll do, that we'll go and with those users that we have created, we should go and try to log in to DNA. So let's try the testing thing. Let me go and log into the DNAC and we are going to give the user name that we have created as external user, obviously. And let's go here and let's give the IP and accept the warning, accept the advance and risk. So this time what I will do that I will use admin one. Remember, we have created admin one. Oops, this is not the DNAC. I should go and log into DNAC and that is 129.100. Yep, so 198.129.100. And here we can go. Now, what we are going to do here that we'll go and log in. And with 
log in with the admin one we have two user one is admin one and other one is the observer one so let's try with admin one here so let me type username and password once it will allow me to type admin one still it is loading so i have given the username and password username you can see that admin one and the password for admin one now let's try to log in and you can see that we are successful so our admin one is able to log in here now the same thing what we should do here that we should go back to the ice so once you are back in the ice you can go to the operation and inside the operation you will see the radius live logs so once you go inside the radius live log you can see the authentication is done the authorization is done you can expand this and you can see all the steps so you can see the authentication is done and one key thing we should check here that the attribute that we have cisco avpr plus 15 is done correct so this is the way that we can verify our configuration as well hi everyone thanks for listening this message in recent times we got messages that uh, do we have any program any course where we can go enroll and we will be very much eligible for the job market what does it mean that if you go and check the it portals you can see that you have different course packages for ccna then ccnp then firewall then cloud then automation etc right so what we have done that uh, we created one program for those engineers uh, who want everything at one place and they are new to the market or maybe they want to enhance their skill set so we created such program joint joint is something like uh, job oriented internet working training now in this program you can see that we have added ccna routing switching cloud virtualization virtualization part of vmware ccna or um, associate label wireless knowledge cisco miraki google cloud associate label knowledge not entire course but how much you need um, to get clear in your interview or uh, when you are working on this cloud environment you are not new to that cloud environment then python then routing switching asa firewall and then we uh, we are adding firepower as well so not only asa firewall but next generation firewall then we are going to add cisco sd wan cisco dna etc like what we want that we want to make this course as a complete package course in terms that once you go and complete these areas you write you can write in your profile in your cv that you know these technologies and apart from that not only this course means once you go and use the joint nine that's the code here and if you apply you will get maximum 85 86 percent discount on this course so not only that we are offering the discount coupon but apart from that we are giving the lab evng lab so whoever will go and join this particular course they will go and get the evng lab as well so they can practice routing switching right so what you need you need a solid foundation solid course where you can gain the technology knowledge then you need the lab environment where you can go and do hands-on practice and then you can go and add these areas in your profile and go for interviews and all right so on other words in in simple words i can tell this thing that if you go to udemy or youtube i have so many different courses i created just to obviously earn money so many courses i have but this is the only course i created actually for the it professionals actually for you where i want that you can go and get the job that's why i have added whatever i have 15 16 year of uh, training experience i have added all the best things from there in terms of that that you gain knowledge whatever gray areas you have someone knows networking don't know automation and cloud someone knows networking they don't know firewalling technology security areas so that means that you can go 
enroll this course, gain the knowledge on those areas that you don't know. Or suppose if you have only one or two years of experience, then you can start this journey, journey complete the entire course within five to six months or maybe three months, and then add these things within your CV profile and get the job. So this is something like job oriented or career oriented training that is going to help you to get the job and write knowledge to showcase in your profile. All right. Thanks for watching this video.